this could be rough. This could be rough. We're just going to do it now. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. I woke up two minutes ago, so you got one of your up on me. <laughs> All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number 152. We've got a, a fantastic panel for you this morning. Look at all this dedication. Look how many people got up early and want to be here. They want to be here for you. They want to be here for me. They want to be here for the world. So everybody can learn about how awesome cap and ball black powder revolvers can truly be. So welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number 152. It's going to be a good time. Quick reminder, today's episode is sponsored by SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Take the Interstate 80 exit to SS Pond. Stop in there. It's just off to the right. You can't miss it. Say hello to Stan. Browse the firearms. If you're a Nebraska resident, go buy something and take something home, and SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. Man, I'll tell you what. It's going to be a good episode. So a couple weeks ago, we did a... um, uh, we did a great episode on the basics of black powder rifles. We covered all the different types of black powder rifles that are out there. Well, a good chunk of them, supplies, things you need to know, where to find them. We, we checked out the prices. We checked out, you know, the performance of these things. And uh, it was very interesting. And, and I just I, I wasn't quite ready to, to move to the revolver side because I needed to educate myself a little bit about black powder revolvers because it's a whole nother rabbit hole that you're going to fall into. And if you're not careful, you might just get into a collecting habit because some of these are just absolutely awesome. When you see what's out there, when you look at the big three, uh, we have Traditions and we have Uberti and Pieta, that I'm probably mispronouncing. Uberti, Uberti. Uh, anyway, they offer so many cool different models that you can pick up. It's like, man, I want one of those and one of those and one of those. And the thing is, a lot of these are, they're like half the price of an actual, you know, like center fire revolver, actual cartridge firing revolver. Uh, and so, you, you know, the collectability of them, they're much, much more easier to access because of price. But anyway, before we just cover the absolute basics of the cap and ball revolver, we're going to go ahead and let the panel introduce themselves. We'll give a little shout out. So let's see here. Rich White, what is new in your world, man? How's it going today? Are you doing good? You doing all right? Yeah, I like mm. better, but I'm not dying. So I guess that's good. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. So, um, again, you you got an awesome show that you do. What is it called? What time is it on? What can people expect? Yeah, it's this week unloaded. It's Sunday evenings, uh, usually sometime between 8 and 9. We're getting started around 8.30 lately, so check that out. Again, it's over on the Unloaded Media channel, and you never know what we're going to talk about on there. And, Definitely, uh, man. Now, a couple months ago, we actually did... Mm-hmm. The show on this topic so you can go back and watch that too when we're done here go over there find that episode it was one of the wild west labeled ones i it was the last one so it should be easy to find there, we did a whole series on uh what different wild west guns it started with the rifles we did pistols we did shotguns we did uh, and we did the cap and ball rifles and revolvers so go over and check mm-hmm. that out and the reason why we did that is we did a bracket on uh wild west guns and came to find out that a lot of my panelists didn't really know anything about these guns. So I was like, I, okay, so I don't feel guys. so bad then because I'm learning, man. I mean, the thing is, there's, a, there's a there's a history behind each one of these models, man. I mean, you could basically study. You know, you could you could find the Wikipedia listing for each model and stay busy oh, yeah. for weeks or months educating yourself on. On, yeah, I know Wikipedia, right? But I mean, there's a lot of good information that you can find out there. And it's kind of curious why some models are currently being reproduced and others are not. It's just kind of kind of funny how there's a pretty good set of, of production out there, but there's so much more that was out there before that you might not ever see, you know, in a cap and ball recreation that one could go by. Yeah, you'll see the mainly the recreations that you see are the ones that were the successful ones because there were a lot of uh, smaller companies that tried getting into the game and they're, they just weren't as successful. Their revolvers may not have been as good as say the cold or the Remingtons or later Smith and Wessons and stuff. So they, they just fell by the wayside. And some of them, you might know that like Ivor Johnson was around back then they were doing things with them. Um, Ivor Johnson was uh, famous for making a lower quality uh, reproduction or copy, if you will, of mm-hmm. the Colt of the Smith and Wesson, both the number three and the num- model one revolvers that were the, First, uh, the number three or model three was the first pass through a cylinder revolver. I think they also made twos as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're, you, there's an interesting history to all this, and it all goes. If you, and uh, I know it's not a cap and ball revolver, but it has its right. start with cap and ball. You can, you can actually trace the lineage of the 44 Magnum cartridge all the way back to the late 1860s. It's really um, interesting how all this all plays in together. 
And, you know, the fact that you, I mean, this is one of the advantages, and depending on the state you're in, um, for 45, I believe, out of 50 states, you can buy these and have these delivered to your door. You don't have to go to the to the gun store and pick them up. Um, you know, you can really shop around for good prices. A person can get a nice recreation. You can go out to the range and just have a lot of fun with it and see what it was like managing one of these things. And it's always kind of funny when I watch the comments on like a, a cap and ball video, I've watched a lot of them. And a lot of you guys that have videos, they're showing up in my recommended uh, videos, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, people are like, Oh my God, I can't believe how primitive that was. Man, that stuff was state of the art technology in the 1850s when these came out or whatever. I mean, that was it. You had that, you had a tactical advantage over your enemy. And so, I mean, for the time, I mean, it was just even, and the fact that the design still kind of carries over today to modern revolvers, I think that speaks volumes about the, the design of these things, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you can, you were talking about getting the um, cap and ball revolver without having to go through the 4473 and everything. You can get, if you get a cap and ball revolver and a conversion cylinder, you can have a cartridge firing pistol without having to go through a 4473, depending on what state you're in. We'll talk about that because I was investigating that. If you don't mind spending the money, it can be a little bit of an investment, sometimes almost as much as the cost of the gun. But the advantage of being able to get to go to modern centerfire cartridges, you know, that might that might offset it. Um, or you can just simply buy one that's already got the conversion done and you've got that look, but it's already a center firing um, revolver, you know. Yeah, Remington actually did their own uh, conversions and were paying out the um, the – owner of the patent on the pass-through cylinder uh, royalty on every one of their uh, factory conversions. Wow. And meanwhile, well, Colt didn't do that. If you wanted your Colt converted, you had to take it to a blacksmith and have them do one of the Richardson-style conversions on it, whereas you could actually buy a factory converted running mm. That's some crazy stuff. Like I said, guys, once you start to get into the rabbit hole, the cap and ball discussion and stuff, it's it's you start you know doing what I'm gonna call the big three of producers, and it is just amazing the selection that's out there. I mean, there's a lot more available. If you look online, there's a lot more you're gonna see than probably what you're gonna find in your local sporting goods store or gun store, just because you know there's maybe a limited market for these things in terms of who's really out shopping for them. So you do have to look around online. The nice thing is that well, the bad thing is that a lot of this stuff, everything is sold out. Farms really, it's amazing how much how many of these. Online, you know, the the, the, the muzzle loaders we were talking about last two weeks ago, the cap and ball revolvers, you really have to hunt around to find some of these because stuff is just sold out everywhere. So I think a lot of people are kind of falling back on what they can find locally or what looks fun. Like, I want to go shoot, but I want to burn my nine millimeter. You know, let's go get a cap ball revolver. Let's just go to the range and have fun. And then you go buy it, and then you're starting to see a lot of the stuff sold out or on back order, which is pretty amazing. And, you know, in terms of muzzle loaders, there, you know, there's, there's a demand for those for people that legitimately hunt with them. So as you go into the fall, that supply starts to thin out too. So, if you find something you want and it is black powder based, just go ahead and buy it because prices are never going to go down. Well, I mean, prices may go down, but like what I'm seeing on these, they tend to be consistent compared to other firearms. And the selection might not be there six months from now. So you got to keep that in mind. Tra Travis, you're, Yo. you're also forgetting one thing. Man, I forget a lot of things. Nice, Rick. What is it? What am I forgetting now? The NFA does not apply to back black powder guns. Yes. Yeah, no, I agree. But there are some states where you can't have them delivered to your door for whatever reason. I think Michigan. Well, that's because some some states, they'll see them as guns, even though yeah. the, the ATF does not. Okay. And on that note, Nice Strike, why don't you give us your intro? Because we're still going around the panel. <laughs> oh, hi. Tell hi, us about Strike. What's going on? Are you Sagittarius, yeah. Pisces? Long uh, no, no, Vir Virgo, Virgo. I don't like long walks at the beach, no. and uh, I long do a podcast normally with Travis when when he does show up. Travis hasn't. Travis has been tardy, you know. He and he's been a no show a couple of times, so we may we may have to give Travis detention, you know. But I, I do a show called Hit or Miss every Tuesday night at nine o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock Central, and you figure it out for Pacific. Typically, typically I am crashing between nine and nine thirty, and I'm working, man. I get home from work, you know. We do dinner, we take the dog for like an hour long walk, and it's like eight thirty, man. My butt is dragging, so I will get back into the groove and do evening podcasts once I kind of get back into the groove of, of the work that I do because it's I'm I know. starting over. But I, I do miss it. I miss hanging out with you guys and everything. I got the summers. I'm with you guys a lot. Holidays, I'll be there with you guys uh, when I you know. I, 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 I'm looking. I'm looking at black powder revolvers right now. Yes. I want this one. I want this uh, one. Uh oh, he's doing a screen share. Ooh, yeah, that one. Yep, yep, yep. The Walker. I want the Walker. I actually, oh, have that one nice. queued up. I have that exact same one queued up. It's not the Sportsman's guy, but I've got that one queued up because uh, I think Scoot has that one. So that's one we're gonna I, talk. I, I've seen the best price from Sportsman, so you know I'll probably get it from them. I. They should be like. 
three. They're listed as oh, okay, four eighty nine is the MSRP. So yeah, no, this one's listed in the low three hundreds though. Yeah, if you're part if you're part of the the buyers club, it's like four or four. You know, I've seen some some you know, it's not not the uh, not the birdies, but I've seen some you know other reproductions cheaper. But, you know, the, but the problem the problem is everything's gone up in price. Everything mm-hmm. has. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised that you know the the, the buy in for you know. Black powder revolvers now is like in like the two fifties range. I'm not surprised. Oh yeah, yeah. Just to get started, then you got to get your supplies, yeah. which are to, to, get, to get like a you know a base 1851 navy. Yeah. All right. So Night Striker show is on Tuesday nights. It's called Hit or Miss. It's on at nine o'clock East Coast time, yeah. uh, eight o'clock Central time. The yeah. most important time zone in the world. I'm, I'm, I'm also doing Thursday night chats at seven seven Eastern. It's six, Friday. It's six, Friday. Six Central. And I'm doing it Fridays at six six p.m. You're going head to head against Yankee Marshall, man. That's well, like y- Yankee's been taking up a, a ton of a ton of my viewers. My that's viewers is mad because of Yankee because he's been going live every single night. I, I like I how we refer to it as my time. You know, like our yeah, time yeah. on the internet. That's my I'm, damn hour to go live. Nobody else in the I'm world. Calling I'm calling it. I'm calling it. You know? That's right, man. Punching up, night strike. Punching up. Wait, man. No punching right. down. <laughs> well, I'm punching sideways. That's that's how it's going. All right, I'm not going to get I, the last thing. No, no, the last thing I want to do is trigger Yankee Marshall and be the product of one of his next videos. So I will say this: if he comes after me, I will actually go on his show and talk to him because I know that just fuels his his fire. He just loves that. He he, he lives on that because nobody ever does it. So he can criticize me if he wants. So I've never had anything against the guy personally. I mean, I I've been he one is one of the early gun channels that brought me into firearms media. Him, the Armory Channel, yes, nothing fancy. Um, you know, those are the things that show up when you do searches. Iraqi veteran. But I've moved over to a lot of just fantastic smaller channels, too, that produce great content. Like Defense Dad. Defense Dad, we'll get to you in a second. Be ready. All right. Black Hat Outdoors. What's going on, brother? How's it going? You busy man this morning or what? Yeah, heading down the road here, as usual, on a Saturday. All right. So, so you said you've got just, like, one or two. Like, you said you don't even have any ball and cap revolvers. Is that percussion cap revolvers? Yeah. Is that You don't have none? No, no, not at all. No, no. <laughs> just like a dozen, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite that many. I have, uh, what do I have? I have a Navy, I have an Army, I have an 1858 Remington, and I have a Walker. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, that Walker seems to be the standard. I think that needs to be the one that everybody's working on. You don't want to be disappointed, you know? Yeah, so. the, walk, the Walker's fun, but to be honest with you, that's probably the most difficult to shoot out of uh-huh. all of them, just because of, look at the weight on it once. <laughs> it weighs like four pounds. <laughs> it's oh, like I know. holding two 1911s in your hand at once. It's basically three pounds unloaded. Yep. Yeah. It's a freaking, that thing's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Racers well, well, like to wave at their target, too. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, Black Cat. What's that? I said they like to wave at, the, at your target, too, when you're pulling the trigger. Yeah. Uh, the sights on most of the Colt cap and ball revolvers are minuscule to say the least like almost non-existent and when you're trying to line up three and a half pounds of revolver hanging out there with no sight it gets interesting yeah, and, <laughs> i mean the sights on your cold is basically just a notch in the hammer your yeah. rear sight yep. not your rear sight yep. and then your blade on the front i would i would <laughs> just super glue a daisy rmr on the top of it like i did for my there head you go. And just you're ready to go your optics ready right out of the box yeah. Just plop it on there with some, some JB weld. And, uh, and don't blow it to the cylinder. Put an ACOG on there. <laughs> yeah. I uh, should figure some. I should figure something out with one of the cheaper, cheaper ones I have. Just to that'll be, that'll be put a five, like an ACOG on there. Five years from now, the, these black powders are going to start coming RMR ready yeah. because you know, people have run out of marketing ideas. Let's take it. Let's take a black. Let's take a <laughs> revolver. Let's have you know base plate adjustable. You know you can put your Trujicon on top of there. Your your vortex. You know your your RMR. I'm telling you, man, that's where it's going. That's where we're headed. They're going to start putting RMRs on Sky CPX twos. You know, we, we, are, oh, we, we got to challenge. That's just wrong. Um, or, you know, a red dot on the side of one of those. It's good, it's high point. When the yeah. RMR costs twice what the pistol does, that's just wrong. Pretty much. When it doubles the price, that shows you what yeah. you get yourself into. So, <laughs> uh, All right. So, uh, Defense Dad, we're going to move on to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your channel? You have fantastic videos that you're putting out right now. I want you guys to go over there and subscribe. Uh, what, what's new in your world, man? Hey, long time no see, by the way. Hi, I'm Defense Dad. 
I'm a Capricorn. I like long walks at the gun range. Oh, sorry, wrong show. Me too. Wait a minute. What? Whoa, whoa. I didn't just say that. No. <laughs> long walks. I like long walks out to the target. I like long walks back. Yeah. So what do you got coming up on your channel? Can you give us just a little, just a little, 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 little teaser of what's coming up on the channel next? What, what do you got lined up? Yeah. Um, I kind of been lazy this week, but uh, I'm starting a new, uh, a new series called Budget versus Beauty. Just going to, you know, kind of compare what people consider nice guns compared to budget guns. And is there really that much difference when the same person's firing them? So I'm not going to say what you bought last night, but with what you bought and what you know I have, I will loan you what I have if you want to take it out and, you know, do a comparison. How's that sound? Yep. Sounds awesome. I mean, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what you bought because I had one. It was fantastic, and I regret selling it to this day. Well, I mean, I traded it, but still, um, yeah, I think that would be a really cool video. You do, you do you. You let me know when you're ready, and I'll let you borrow it, all right? Yep, sounds good. Cool, cool, cool. So make sure you guys get over there and subscribe to Defense Dad's channel. Um, I'll be posting my $300 zombie gun challenge range test, if you could call it that, uh, this week. And there's a link to Defense Dad's channel at the end of it and also his uh, $300 zombie gun challenge video. And so make sure you guys watch my video. Go subscribe to his channel and then go check it out. There's a lot of awesome content. If you want something good to watch, if you've watched everything, if you're whatever stuck at home or you're getting tired of watching crap on Netflix, just head on over and check out our channels. Lots of great content. So... Okay, also joining us, we have another fellow Nebraskan. Pat Hirsch is in the house. Pat, what's going on, brother? How's it going, man? Uh, going good today. Going good. Uh, just uh, wife's gone. I got all the kiddos, and yeah, let the good times roll. <laughs> hey, I'll be over with the uh, Red Solo Cups about noon, okay? <laughs> yeah, I might, I might need it by then, so uh, that would go. definitely be appreciated. So Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Cool, cool. And you did your If I Could have Just Have One Gun video, which was really cool. I, I love that video. So, guys, get over to Pat Hirsch's channel. And, Pat, if you want to post a link in this, uh, in the chat over on the side so people can go check your channel out, man, go do it. You guys, any of you guys can do that on panel, obviously. Um, but, yeah, do check it out. He's got a great channel. He's getting some good content on there. We're going to make a gun tuber out of you before you know it. We'll make a gun tuber out of you here soon. So, awesome. Glad you're with us. I hope to be uh, posting another video uh, this weekend. Sweet. Um, got some friends coming down that are uh, first time gun owners. Hmm. So, uh, Interesting. Get, uh, just basically trying to get them through the basic safety and everything of guns. And, um, and actually, their first guns are handguns. So, oh, so you're saying you don't want to borrow the Desert Eagle? No. <laughs> <laughs> actually, those have surprisingly low recoil because they weigh so friggin' much. You would be amazed at how easy they are to shoot. I can only speak for the 44 Mag and 357, but still, they're not, they're very easy to fire. You'd be surprised. But you just got to be able to hold the damn thing up, too. That's part of the problem. You have to have, like, you know, some well, decent strength there yeah yeah so um but yeah just uh doing that later this afternoon and uh yeah just trying to get them teached up on some safety and uh just make sure that they do it right and uh don't accidentally blow their foot off or something in the process <laughs> <laughs> yeah we need to be very very careful and also when they take that first shot the first shot have they fired these yet at all uh, yeah, they were down uh, oh. a couple weeks ago, and uh, actually, and uh, they got some trigger time in, and uh, actually, the one is a gal, and uh, she is better than the guy. Oh, no, that's <laughs> normal. That's no, my wife's exact same way, dude. She's a way better shot than me. She's yeah, even, a, she's right-handed and left-eye dominant. She can still shoot anything in the collection and outshoot me. It's terrible. It's because I'm, I'm trying too hard. She just, she's having fun. I'm trying too hard, so. Um, right. I would say any anytime you ever take a first-time shooter out to the range i'd recommend just one round in the gun so that way if they panic and drop it or muzzle flash you it's it's empty so that's the i always recommend that the first time i ever take i don't care if it's a revolver i don't care if it's semi-auto whatever i just one 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 round just to start them off to make sure that they are you know they understand what they're doing so they don't panic and drop it i mean you never know how a person's gonna react to something blowing up in their hands you know they're not they're not used to that always so you got to be really careful with it yeah so anyway. that's exactly what we did the first go around um, they just had one round and that's all they got. And, yeah. Uh, and they're, they're, they're learning very quickly. Um, and they are responsible people. So that, oh, yeah. Made a world of and if they're even just comfortable having, if they bought the guns and they've transported them, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're going to be good if they're, if they're conditioned to at least having it in their hands, they're not going to worry about it. So yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Yeah. It'll, good, good weekend. 
Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to continue on the panel. We got some single shot in the house. Single shot. What's new in your world, man? How, how's it going? You doing okay? Not bad. Not bad. Oh yeah, we're doing. We're doing fine. Uh, you stole my thunder though about the about the one round thing. That's a very oh. good piece of advice. Anyone that has never fired a weapon before in their life, rifle, pistol, or whatever, mm -hmm. one round. Give them the chance to feel what it feels like to fire that thing. And, then and from there, do me a favor. Don't don't be a clown and hand the first time gun shooter the 454. Oh my god! So they get, no. I know it's going to be funny on YouTube and it's going to get you lots of views with range gun fails, but it really reflects poorly on those of us that are trying to set an example for safe use of firearms on video. You know, yeah. it's that kind of stuff that ends up in national news and makes crazy. us look like clowns. I know it's great to see that little hundred pound thing try to fire, you know, 500 Smith and Wesson Magnum and get knocked in the forehead but it's just not you know no no let's not no, go there that's not even that's not even a good idea you know yep. and, it, and it makes us look bad because we allowed something like that to happen you yeah. know so no <laughs> well that's uh, stupid is start stupid them out good. start them yeah. out with a small caliber mm -hmm. you know let them get used to it and uh you know if they feel like they want to uh, fire a few more rounds go for it Exactly. But they, exactly. They're not walking in the dark and expecting something crazy like that incident that happened years ago with that woman at 454. That was unfortunate. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I've got uh, a route on the way home, and I'm going to be doing that. Hopefully this time I'll actually have a chance to do up a video too. Because I've been cool. busy as a one-armed paper hanger once I got there cutting grass and. But I'm a one hour, uh, a uh, one man bandit there when I get home. <laughs> one man army, huh? You got yeah, to yeah. get all by yourself. I get everything done, and uh, it takes a while for me to get things done. This last time I was home, I processed a bunch of brass. Mm. So we're getting stuff together as far as that goes. Good, good. And uh, we're going to be doing that 44 Magnum uh, uh, review there. Uh, Probably this time as well. The weather looks like it's going to be good for the uh, for the time home Monday, Tuesday. So good. I'm going to try to get that done. And uh, I've got a, I've got uh, other uh, videos in mind. What I'm going to do. I I uh, did a nice little short casting video here a little while ago, and that turned out pretty well. I had a good time with that new mold. Getting used to that. That's something the black powder shooters are going to have to look into as well. Uh, cast your own because yeah. uh, uh, you don't know what you're going to be picking up there in the stores if it's available. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing is what everybody's been talking about is availability primers. of stuff. I don't know so much about bullets, but primers are the, the big thing that's just cleared out at our local sporting yeah. goods stores. You can't you can get them for certain black powder firearms, but your, a lot of your commercial primers for reloading, gone. Yeah, I know. So, I'm running into that same problem. And yeah. I've got about a thousand rounds on the bench ready to oh getting ready to load so <laughs> what is real quick what is the and i've got a thousand of them because i was going to get into doing this this summer haven't had a chance to do it yet the the typical primer you use with 12 gauge shotguns what, what did i end up buying i bought a box of a thousand of something it was for whatever i'm going to be reloading what number is that 209 and okay now that Okay, and those are those are popular with a lot of percussion black powder muzzle loaders, right? Yeah, you're in line. Okay, okay, okay. so I've got line. those. I can actually use those because I can't get I can't get them anymore. They're gone. Oh, so yeah. if I need to go into that stock shooting at the range, I will. Yeah, get a brick okay. of two hundred nine. You better grab it. <laughs> yeah, I got, I bought those back in April when I bought all my reloading supplies for my shot shells. I just haven't had a chance. I was waiting for it to cool down a little bit before I set up in the garage and oh, load yeah. up uh, sure. the couple hundred um, holes that I have and and all the wads and all that fun stuff. So yeah. Cool, man. I'll probably do that as a live stream, too. We'll just do a little reload video and have some fun with it. I'll have, uh, we'll get Avid Waterfowler back here. Uh, we'll have John join us, and uh, it'll be a good time. So, that's another thing, too. Your waterfowl and uh, uh, bird season's coming right up. So, these guys, especially the clubs, uh, once they get going at the clubs for skeet shooting, trap shooting, mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. like that, those primers are going to disappear quick. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and then, like the primers, I I can get everything except the primers. The lead is there, the gunpowder, obviously, the 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 wads, the holes. I can get that stuff locally now, but primers are gone. I mean, maybe I don't know. I don't know if you just got to look around and try to find them, but 
Yeah, and maybe there might be a lot of people that don't participate in competition this year because they don't they don't have the supplies to reload or they only have so much on hand. Or I will say this though, if you want to get something, if you want to get a gun and you want to get a lot of ammo for whatever reason, get a twelve gauge because I shells are plentiful. When I'm seeing in all the stores, you can get twelve gauge ammo, and I'm not seeing any kind of price spikes like I do on everything else. Um, I'm starting to see a lot more five five six, you know, appearing. Locally in our stores, thank God we got Hornady 80 miles west of here, so they keep our state stocked up. But I love um, that. I love up. that place, <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, wish I could yeah. get over there again. I'm telling you. Well, yeah, and the thing is, they got a lot of Hornady Frontier. But what's that? So you talking about shotgun? I was shocked. I was at the Walmart. And I was just thought like, a uh, whim. I went and looked see what they had in stock over there. They actually had 28 gauge on the shelf. Oh my God! See, because some why Walmart is kind of they've really thinned down. We know they've thinned down their ammo. You know, they've got a lot of of odd. They, 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 they've gotten ours has moved out most of their 22 LR. There's not even tags for it anymore. They're only carrying calibers for the guns they have in stock, you know, some 308, 243, 270, seven millimeter mag, this and that. Um, but like a lot of 22, 250, 17 W or HMR. Uh, but you know, obviously the nine millimeter is gone, the 762 is gone now. You know, the 300 blackout is gone. Um, 380 is not there anymore. So you really got to kind of hunt around to find some of those pistol calibers that you used to get, but. Yeah, shotgun ammo, not a problem. Not for us, not 12, 20, whatever. It's there. So, yeah, we got yeah. all kinds of shotgun ammo around here, unless you want buckshot, then there ain't a round to be found. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah, we do have that at the sporting goods store, but not at Walmart. They do carry, but it, you're going to pay, you're going to pay a premium for it. No, no, no. One of the, one of the big gun stores here in town does have it, but it is pretty expensive. It's really gone up in price, but yeah, your defensive buckshot. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's no buckshot to be found. He, even the um, cheap estate stuff or stuff like that, there is none. That and like I said, I think a lot of people buying the shotgun, they want some sort of defensive shotgun ammo, and they don't want to go with slugs, so they go buy the buckshot. And and there's not not like there was a lot of it for me. There was not a lot of it on the shelves anyway. You know, I mean, you really there wasn't like there was tons of brands and different varieties. It was it was there's one or two that they they had the Olins, you know, the the the, the, the cardboard box with the green and black uh, just military grade buckshot or whatever that was yeah. a battle i could buy my local walmart then they did get some estate in i think is what it is i did a video on it when i showed my break action because that was the ammo i kept in it for self-defense yeah the local uh, general store thing around here we went a couple months ago and i bought the last five boxes of buckshot they had for 20 gauge mm -hmm. and they haven't gotten any in since then mm -hmm. all right let's keep moving on with the uh the introductions here so squib load you got your coffee are you a happy camper I'm going to have my first sip right now. Do it. Do it. So Squib Load has got an awesome channel. He's also got another channel called Squib Lift. He does a lot of really great reviews, covers everything, coffee, tools, whatever, man. You go check it out. There's a great variety on his channel. And I love to watch his videos because he and I, we test a lot of the same products. So it's always cool to get his perspective, uh, especially on the coffee thing. You know, that's always a lot of fun to watch the coffee reviews. And he's always showing off a lot of uh, awesome coffees that I've never heard of or seen before, stuff he can get locally. And there's some real good stuff, man. I've enjoyed all the stuff that you've sent me, man. It's been delicious. So you get your coffee on. And uh, let's see, Squib, anything you want to say about the channel at all? Are you good to go? Uh. You know, the, the stuff that's on my channel isn't for everybody. There's a lot of channels. It's all gun, 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 and nothing else. And I do a little bit of variety. The whole premise is, you know, gun people are regular people like everybody else. We have, there's more to us than just the Second Amendment and guns and going to rallies and stuff like that. So uh, if you go to my channel, you'll, you'll find firearms-related videos, reloading-related videos, stuff like that. But you'll find other stuff. And then the Squib Lift is one of my B channels. And that one, Sandhills Shooter kind of uh, inspired that one a little bit. I mean, I mean, actually, it was a whole bunch of guys that I talked to on different live shows kind of inspired the original uh, channel. And then I changed the name because of Sandhills. And that one is kind of centered on some things from work. But I also throw in other things like uh, I've got a, a playlist of critters. You know, I see a, a critter out in, out in the uh, nature center out in the woods or something like that I'll, I'll i'll film it or a few other things like that so that one's really uh you're not going to find any firearm stuff over there it, it, yeah it, the kind of videos i do really aren't for everybody so I, I i don't expect anybody to to check it out but if you just go to my channel either of those channels and just watch one video and go oh that's all this is about no, then no, you you miss yeah. the whole premise, and that, I've had that. I've had that in the comment section where they'll they'll pick like uh, one of my videos where I was picking on Midnight Range TM. 
where I, I, I shot footage in different restrooms in, oh, yeah. uh, all across the country, right? <laughs> because because his show on Sunday night, The Closer, by Woosh, yeah, is the, yeah. the running joke that we have in our circles is that you have to, you're contractually obligated to make a toilet flushing sound after you say the name of his show. So I've had some people tune into my channel, watch one of those videos and think that my video is nothing about bathroom, but bathroom reviews. And, you know, when I go to check out a channel, I'll go to see, you know, I, you know, the, go into the about section, see if they have a description, see if they have an intro video, see how, when did they first jump on YouTube? Oh, they've been on YouTube 10 years. Oh, and I'll go, I'll click on sort, sort by oldest. Mm -hmm. sort by newest and i'll watch some of their original videos i'll watch some of their newer videos and then i'll pick something in the middle before i make a judgment on that channel so when i go to a channel it says this channel has no videos well how can i how will i ever know anything about you or, or what you're interested in if you don't make videos so i'm always encouraging people out there get out your cell phone Make some videos. You don't have to do professional grade you don't have to you may find you end up putting up a video that somebody else learned something off of or is entertained off of and they find it useful and and you'll get that comment and you'll be like oh okay you know don't don't expect to just you know shoot videos of, of your kids put oh, them yeah. on the internet and next thing you know you're a millionaire because i think that's what some oh. people think youtube's about and it's not what it's about Re review breakfast sandwiches like me and you might get 100 views <laughs> you know here's a funny thing about what you just said about um about people making comments i had a guy last night made a comment on my video he goes bro when your wife sees you cleaning your gun on the countertop, you are so going to get in trouble. And I go, bro, check my channel. 15, later, 15 minutes later, bro, I just subbed. Nice channel. I'm like, right on. Because, you know, the guy yeah. thought that. I, I'm like, you obviously have never seen my channel before. Yeah, he doesn't know that your countertop is actually <laughs> listed on the uh, National Historical Registry of is. Landmarks. Yes. For the record, I did the last video I made in the house before we moved. The night before I moved, literally the night before I took the last stuff out of our house, I did a a, a final video. It was the tabletop review of my countertop, and I was like, because I have a few of you guys like, when are you going to review the tabletop review of a tabletop? I'm like, dude, I'm like, what's well, not a tabletop? Well, I never really had a tabletop to make videos from. You know, we, we stole the table. Before I could, so two thirds of my collection is made on the same green linoleum countertop. You know, I was like, "Bro, check my channel." He's like, "Oh my god!" Hey, I waited. I waited for years for that tabletop review of the tabletop. I will what say that. I, said, that. I waited for you years for you to come out with the tabletop review of the tabletop. Well, we have a table, so I might just review it, but I don't do a lot of videos on it. The reason why I would use the kitchen is because it had the best lighting in the house, although I don't know what my problem was. I never seemed to be able to buy lighting for any of my other videos, but the lighting was always pretty good, especially like in the evening and stuff. I had light, you know, good sunlight coming through, but anyway, we got to continue with the intros here. Tony, Tony is in the house. Tony's probably sitting there like, would you guys just shut up and talk revolvers already? Tony, how's your morning going, dude? What's up? Um bored out of my freaking mind just isn't this a great conversation though? it's like a bunch of dudes sitting around the lunch table just throwing whatever out there you know <laughs> hey square buddy long time no see yeah good to see you too tony dude this is like a family reunion these are the ogs off to my left over here little squibby little tony these guys are these guys have been with me since the beginning i think we're coming up on either three or four years of doing uh caliber corner episodes in i don't remember what the first month was it might have been either october november december i need to go back and check but uh, yeah, these guys have been with us since the start, man. Tony's Tony's uh, he's he's the Godfather, man. I think I started calling him <clears> the Godfather. <throat> he's the Tra Godfather. Travis, I was there too. Yeah. I was there too. And Night Strike, Night Strike. No, I'm just saying that these guys, you know, because we haven't seen them for a while, so it's good to have them here. But Night Strike's been with us since episode one, so I think you're the one that <laughs> you gotta go go watch the first five minutes of Calvin Corner. Me, me, me and Travis actually show. had a conversation because Travis like. I, I, I'm trying. I want to do my own show. So what do I need to do to do to do my own show? And I'm like, well, you just need to do this, and you know, you just need to go, you go out there, call it something. I'm like, call it Caliber Corner, call it this, call it that. You know, Travis, like, I like the idea of Caliber Corner. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, actually, it was um, it was heavy. It was heavy B that that um came up with the name caliber corner because we had a suggestion during one of Matt's shows i was like what should i call the podcast and heavy's like just call it caliber corner i'm like dude that's awesome although there is another caliber corner out there on youtube and it's watch related you know caliber the 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 watch me mechanical so there is a caliber corner channel 
but I don't think they do a caliber corner podcast. They haven't done videos in a long time, and they've never contacted. We're, we're, me we're talking gun calibers in this. In this, instance. yeah, yeah, it's a whole different type of content. But I, they, they, I don't think they do any kind of live streams or anything like that. But so if you check it out, there is a request from Kingpin, real quick. Uh, Pat Hirsch, can you give us the title of one of your videos so Kingpin can link it so people can find your channel? Pat, what would be one of the videos that we could use to 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 link? What what's the title of one of your videos? Pat, are you still there? You might have a low. You might have a so so. Pat, at some point, chime in and give us the name of a title, and then also, uh, what do we need? Single shot was a single shot. Kingpin, what were you asking for? It was um, Pat Hirsch and also single shot. I think is that right? We needed the names of one of your videos too, so Kingpin can link it. Yeah, yeah single so. shot. Give us give us the name of one of your videos, the title of one of your videos, so Kingpin can link it out there in the chat, so people can can look you up. Uh, just cashed in the, that last one. I think I think that's what I named it anyway. Just so, cashed in. Ca casting. Oh, casting. Ca is it called just casting or casting? I believe it is. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Okay. Okay. Because there's the thing is there's a lot of single shot channels on YouTube when you yes. type in single shot. There's a lot of them that that pop up. There was one of them that had like a like like a Native American chief, and then it was like sports. It was like a sports team or something. I was like. Is that right? <laughs> oh, put, the t put the exclamation point after the T in, in shot. You got it. Okay. All right. So Kingpin, we're going to put you to we're going to put you to work on that, buddy. We're going to see if you can link a few of those videos up for the people that are out there. And uh, real quick, let's just give a little shout out to people watching. I'm sorry we had 36 minutes of introductions, but doesn't it make for great conversation this morning? You guys are all family. We're all sitting around the table talking. So we got uh, Kingpin Philo. Donger operators out there. Also, Jason Stewart is in the house. Uh, G23, Scott P79, gun loving grandpa, Keith Gregory, uh, Jason Stewart, Grim90. By the way, Grim90 was the winner of this month's uh, September Patreon giveaway. Grim, I'm going to be stopping at UPS today to get your package in the mail. Let me know when you get it, buddy. Rich White's out there and over here pulling double duty. Nighthawk Medic is in the house. Nighthawk, we need to get you a link, bro, so you can join us. Uh, Firefighter 09100 is out there. He's going to start making content on his channel. Defense Dad is over there and over here. Sand Hills Shooter is in the house. He says he's off to work and he wish he was here. Dude, man, you have a great day today, Sand Hills. Um, Black Hat Outdoors is out there. Uh, Uplift Mofo Party Plan is in the house. Man, they keep deleting your messages. I don't know what you're saying, but we need to figure out what's going on. Mike is out there. Good morning, Mike. Tacos and French fries, always. Ozzy Orsborn is in the house. And uh, let's see who else is out there. Zulywood Somali Songs channel says, can you help me get 1,000 subscribers? Brother, make content, and the subscribers will come to you. Those are my words of wisdom. So let's just go ahead and dive down the... the yeah, it the, took me hold, forever. Hold what's on that? a second. Hold on yeah. a second here. Yeah. Before yeah. we get started, I wish yes. to apologize for the primer shortage. Ah, uh, Tony, was that because of you? You and Squib. Squib goes and buys forty thousand at a time, which is enough so that you know uh, forty people could have a thousand. But uh, Tony, did you just go buy like a whole pallet of them, or what? No, I didn't buy as many as Squib. I only got fifteen thousand. Oh, only fifteen. <laughs> okay, you know, here's the thing. I'm in the parking lot outside the sporting goods store that doesn't open for another half an hour, and there are a bunch of good old boys in line in front of the door, and you know what they're waiting for. That's the you twenty exactly caliber. What they're waiting for? It's the twenty-two caliber ammo mafia. That's what it is. The twenty-two caliber. Those are the guys that started. They got in that addicting habit of going to Walmart at five thirty in the morning when they put the, the twenty-two LR out, and they'd buy their two bricks every morning, and now they could build a freaking cabin out of those bricks. Even though they're, they're gonna, you know what's going to happen? They're going to die with that 22 LR, and it's going to go to a damn estate sale. That is what's going to happen to all those people that were hoarding 22 LR. Night strike. What's yeah, up? But, but it, least, or or 80 people could have 500. This is true. Hey, this is true. At least 20. that 22 ammo I'll have it until I'm dead. <laughs> well, yeah, I just say it was pretty frustrating when you couldn't get it. And there was people lined up, and they're who would you get the 22 ammo? You know, it was it was it's weird how human beings get this this funky addiction to things where it's like, it's not a drug, but it's almost like a drug. It's just odd. I mean, yeah. Well, those, those people standing out front of that sporting goods store might be waiting for nine millimeter too, because that's, you know, that's the unicorn right now. So, um, all right, so go ahead. Tony. My understanding is this one will, uh, is, is selling it, but they're only uh, allowing one box per customer per visit. So 
I don't know. I'll see hey, when I go in there. If people want to go pay twenty eight ninety nine for a box of fifty rounds of federal, more power to them. But all I'm going to say is I, I've been telling you guys for years: get out there and buy ammo. You know, every time I'd make a video, say, "Hey, it's nine bucks a box. Go buy it. Go buy it." You know, yeah. I, I, I will say that I have never stood in line to buy ammo. Not ever. No. 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 Uh, no. Me neither, dude. I. No, I don't, I've never needed it. That line. Bad. I'm not going to. But I mean, I had to park somewhere to do this. I'm doing the show from the truck. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, it just makes sense to get my coffee and go down the street and just sit you, and uh, wait in the, the sporting goods store parking lot. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to look at me. They're looking at me like competition. It's like, no, no, no. I'm on, I'm on a podcast, dude. You know what you should do? I mean, leave us and go interview them and ask them, how do you feel about this? What's going on right now? Tell me, tell me what, what, what's the deal? What can you not find? I mean, it'd be really interesting to get the perspective of the people that are standing in line. You know, I'm kind of curious what it is exactly. And maybe there's an ad, maybe they got something like a doorbuster or something that looks like a good deal. Um, who knows? I mean, it's kind of interesting why people do stuff like that. So, all right. So let, let's get into the discussion of the cap and ball revolvers, the absolute basics. So here's the questions I have for you as a potential buyer of my first cap and ball revolver. Where do I start? Cleaning them sucks. Well, I understand that, but I want to buy one first. Where do I begin? Should I go brass frame, steel frame? Should I buy a kit with everything in there? Is there a certain brand you guys that's always been great for you? Where to should I start? Honest, yeah. Somebody who's familiar with handguns, yeah. but wants to get into cap and ball. That's me. I would suggest the eighteen fifty eight. Because is that the the much, army or the navy or which one do you recommend? Yeah, it's the eighteen fifty eight new army. So, okay, here's the deal, Tony. I can get for three twenty nine. I can get the little kit that will at least get me started and give me an idea of what I need. I know a lot of those components you're going to want to upgrade. Um, would it be okay getting one of those kits for about three twenty nine, or is my money better spent getting a nice steel frame model for like three twenty nine to three forty nine, and then buying bigger bottles of cleaner and bore butter and larger batches of what? What do you recommend, Tony? What would you do if you were going to go buy one again for the first time? Would you have just bought? You know, what? What do you think? Probably the cheapest thing I could find, but that that okay. mistake because the actual Remington clone is uh, real similar to a regular handgun that you might have already had experience with. It's so you say Remington clone? Are these made by Pieta or Uberti or Uberti makes them? So it's they're they're licensed like Remington. Well, I don't even need to be licensed anymore because of the the age of the design. But so it's it's a copy of which Remington model specifically? Which the one is it? The 1858 Outlaw or 1858 New Army. So that'd be a good starter. You think that'd be the way to go? Uh, I'm a little biased because I think the gun is fantastic looking, but yeah. Okay. And I'm not worried about ease of loading. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm going to just enjoy the experience and just see what the experience was like, you know, getting started. So, so that might be one of the good ones. And so when I go over, I'm not going to screen share, but if I go over to the traditions website, you know, they've got these ready packs that they sell. You can get the 1858 army in a ready pack. You can get the 1860 army in a ready pack. They've also got some Navy models. And like I said, for 329 to get into it, just to see if I really like it, and then from there, I'm the kind of person that likes to likes to buy into a certain type of firearm on the lower end. And if I really enjoy it, then I'll just go ahead and upgrade and buy a nicer one. I did that with my lever action. I did that initially with my handguns. Um, I'm going to probably go that route with my shotguns. I've just got a TriStar setter that I didn't pay a whole lot of money for, a 12-gauge over-under. If I like trap and skeet, then I'll go buy a Satori or a, uh, a Beretta. So you, you want to get into it. So but, but it doesn't really matter. If I'm going to get a shooter, do I want to go with a brass frame or steel frame? Because I keep seeing yep. certain options. What And let, let's keep conversion cylinders out of the discussion for this particular argument because I don't know if I want to upgrade later on, but I want to save some money. So should I go so brass or steel? Yeah. A yep. brass frame is less historically accurate, but the brass that they're using isn't like uh, the uh, cartridge brass or something that you're thinking is going to be really uh, fragile. Mm, it, it's mm. uh, it's I, there's a name for it, but it's a modern it's a modern hardened kind of uh, metal, but it gives you that brass look. But overall, though, historically, more of these guns were steel and iron than brass. So it, it really depends. If you're just gonna you know try to get into it for the least amount of money just to see if you like it and then upgrade later mm -hmm. as you upgrade with these, because they're reproductions of actual historical guns, actual real guns that you can see in a museum or even buy for yourself, depending on what it is, 
you may start to understand a history and then you realize that, oh, I kind of want to try this out or I kind of want to try that out. And, and Travis, you know, I guess my mindset is different than, than you. I, you know, for me, I didn't want to get one of the, uh, the starter kits or something like that because it wasn't as, as accurate as authentic. Okay. But before I bought my first one, I knew that I wanted to go down this rabbit hole. So if somebody doesn't know they want to go down this rabbit hole, that might not be a bad way to look at it. Here's the thing. It's almost like reloading. You need certain base tools yes. and components and materials yes. To shoot any black powder percussion revolver. Once you have this stuff, you usually don't have to buy too much other stuff. Yeah. Hey, Squib, was your first one a walker? He just got bumped out, but he's back now. Give him a second here. He's got, he does have a walker on his channel that, he, that he's featured. Yeah, he does He does have a walker. I think he said he's got, Squib, was your first one the walker that you show off in your channel? No, no. My first, no. My first is my Lamat. But, uh... Okay. But you're sorry, the, the, the truck disconnected there. No, you're we can hear you fine. Certain, you're going to need certain things, and some of that stuff is interchangeable. A nipple wrench, some of those are, are specific to one gun or two or three guns. You might want some spare parts, some spare what about a springs, you know. Powder I mean, dispenser? Also, your powder dispenser? Because I know the traditions kit comes with a little one. Do you want to go with yeah, something bigger? You can use a flash. You can use a measure. You can you can get little vials and have them pre-measured, ready to go. Oh. You can make paper cartridges for these things and just put in paper cartridges. Spare cylinders. That new model Navy or new model Army, the cylinders are $95 each. Imagine paying $95 for a magazine. So people nah. like them because you can do the quick change on them. But at $95 a pop, is it worth it? So there's a lot of things to consider if you go down this rabbit hole. But once you get those things, in, everything I bought for my Lamat back in 2000, I have used on the other three guns. So and then over time, I've, I found, uh, you know, I've got two two different cappers. There's, they sell different types of, of cappers that make it easier to put the percussion caps on. You may find one fits one gun really well and one fits the other. So that's how you end up with, with more. So some of this stuff, I'm yeah. just, I'm not the kind of person that's going to candy coat it and say, oh yeah, for 300 bucks, you're shooting and you're good to go. You're going to end up either investing more into it later or that first initial investment in all your, your tools and, and everything, your measures and everything you can use later on. And it's like, Oh, I'm glad I got this because you know, it's, it's interchangeable. So Squib, let's talk about the powder real quick, just to kind of get this stuff out there for somebody who's really interested in one. Um, can you use the same, like, is it like a, is it like a triple F powder that you typically run in these things? What, what do yeah, you do? Triple, triple F is for revolvers. You can run two F, but that's it. So the, the, the rating is based on what it's going to be fired in a cannon yeah, or yeah. A, a handgun. The two F is for cartridges for black powder cartridges, but you can use it in a, in a percussion revolver. But three F is, is what you want to go with. There's a, there's a artificial substitute. There's pirate XP, which is the equivalent of three F, but a lot of guys don't like pirate X and it, it, they, it creates fouling issues and other, other things like that. So, if that's the only thing you've got or you haven't had a bad experience with it, that's fine. But if you're talking to somebody who's been shooting these for a while, usually what you hear is, no, no, don't use Pyrodex. So I think that's a personal preference thing. But uh, the, the Go-X powder, and there's a few other manufacturers of the powder, they're, they're all going to use the F rating. Okay, now with, with regards to the powder, so if you don't want to go with the, the, the black powder substitute, is, isn't it kind of hard to find actual real deal black powder? And do you have to have a special storage for it at home like they do apparently at the gun dealer? Nope. Nope. I've got a can of triple F that's 20 years old and it works just fine. As long as you tighten that lid on there, you're, you're good to go. It's just like uh, storing smokeless powder for reloading. As long as you've got a good seal on it, you're good to go. Uh, as far as any hazmat stuff uh, at your house, you don't have to follow the same guidelines as a commercial business. Okay, what about and static, as as, as static as and sparks? Any, is that an issue at all? Static and sparks with a metal can? Is there something you need to put an insulator around it at now, all? Or? Now they sell it. Now they sell it in in a plastic jug. Oh, okay, but I bought okay. it so long ago. I bought it when they had sold it in metal. I, one thing I wouldn't do is I would not buy a used can, an open no, can of this. No. I've seen it for sale at gun shows where it's half full. It might be perfectly fine, but I wouldn't bother. I would never, never buy no. it. I always buy it new. But the thing is, oh, no, uh, black powder is easy to get. It's easy. But I've seen 
I've seen the Pyrodex for sale when they're out of stock on, on uh, black powder, whether it's GoX or another brand like Swiss powder or something like that that they sell. I've seen them out of stock on the real stuff, but still have plenty of the fake stuff. So, okay. yeah, black powder is easy to get. It's easy to store. I did a vi video on the stability of components. Mm -hmm. Reload combo and I, I lit some black powder on fire to show some people what it does. So, I mean, you don't be stupid with it, but, you know, it's not one of these where you're picking up the can and shaking like a leaf. You know, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, I've used triple seven in mine before, which is a black powder substitute. That works, works just, as far, just as well as black powder, really. That seems to come really highly rated. Different. When I was researching the muzzle loaders, the triple seven brand seemed to be yeah. the, that was a 2F, but that seems to be a really good, solid choice, you know. Yeah, when I have, times when I haven't been able to find black powder, I usually can find triple seven. Even Walmart sells triple seven. And you can get away with it. And it's an equal, it's the same weight per charge as black powder. So you can use your same measures and everything with it. You just want to make sure you kind of clean your measure out before you switch back to a regular black powder. Okay. Now, I don't want to deviate from the conversation, but there is a question out in the chat. This is an interesting one. This might be somebody who's fairly new to firearms. And this, so, so Donger Operator says, can you hunt deer with a black powder legally? That would be some pioneer, pioneer level hunting. So Donger, in Nebraska, we have an actual like time period dedicated to black powder hunting. And you can use anything from a modern inline black powder rifle to a freaking flintlock if you want to. In Nebraska, you can legally hunt deer with a spear. You can actually go hunt deer with this. You can. It's in, it's in our actual guidelines. They added it about five years ago. So, yeah, you can go black powder hunting. It depends on how rustic you want to go. But then also keep in mind that there's the, the side to it where you want a clean shot and you want a quick kill. You don't want the animal to suffer. And so that's why, as you know, as hunters, right, not to go all fud here, but you want to make sure that that's why I would go for a modern inline black powder rifle if I was going to go deer hunting. If I'm going to take the time off of work, spend the money, buy the supplies, go out into the plains, right? I would want something that's going to, it's going to guarantee me the best harvest possible. So I would say, but if you're going to go close quarters, you're going through the woods, maybe your shots are 20 or 30 yards. You want to go flintlock? Hey man, more power to you. You know, yeah, um, there's right. certain caliber, uh, uh, there's certain caliber restrictions depending on the state and you yeah. might not be able to black powder on your state, I'll, but that might be the only hunting you can do. I'll add in because I know he's from PA. I'm actually doing a live stream with them after your show. Oh, he's, okay. Uh, okay. He's originally from Australia and lives in Pennsylvania oh, now. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. So anybody out there just to promote my show after this, I'm going to be doing a live stream on my show on my channel with them. And if you, want, hey, if you want a, you want a cool channel to subscribe to, I think it's called Aussie gun reviews. I've been subscribed to him for years. Okay. Aussie gun reviews is awesome. He's an Australian uh, gun channel pro pro two a guy. He understands what we deal with here in the States and himself seeing restrictions in Australia. It's interesting watching his reviews because there's a lot of guns people in Australia can't have. So he's got great content. So do check out Aussie gun reviews. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers just in terms of a gun channel, but he makes fantastic content. So it's a fun All one right. to watch. But yeah, um, so to the black powder stuff since yes. he's in PA with me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually have two seasons. We have a flintlock season and an open muzzle loader season. So the first season you can use inlines any kind. The second season you're only allowed to use flintlock muzzle loaders. You're not allowed to use percussion cool, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now you years ago it used to just be flintlock. They changed that maybe ten or twelve years ago where they added a an inline season to it. I use a flintlock for both. You'd be surprised. Uh, yeah. I mean, at 100 yards, minute of whitetail is not a problem. As long as you practice shooting it, yeah. there's a little bit of a – got to practice with your hold because there's a little delay between when the pan charge flashes and the gun goes off and it can make you flinch. And that little split-second delay in there, it can make you flinch and you can throw your shot off. As long as you practice with them, it'll go. It's that freaking flash in the pan that makes you jump. <laughs> yeah, this firecracker go off next to your face, you know? Yeah, yeah that's, there, and there is an actual, I mean, depending on the type of powder and stuff, with a flintlock, there is an actual delay there that's very slight, but it's even audible sometimes. You hear the crack bang, like the, the powder flash go off in the pan and then the shot, and you have to be able to hold, hold steady through the pan flash until the chart the main charge goes off because yeah, like if you punch if here. you punch on that first flash then you're going to throw your shot way off yeah like we were talking about when we were actually had the black powder rifle mm -hmm. got, if you're really unlucky you can take up to 30 seconds sometimes for that 
<laughs> you better know your bullet, round, man. And you can get some incredibly accurate. I think we mentioned this before in the black powder rifle discussion. Again, not that I'm, we'll get back to revolvers here in a sec, but the, the Kentucky um, flintlock, we could argue, was the rifle that helped us win the revolution because that – through the that through the the range out there you know it, it added like an extra 200 yards to our potential shot so we didn't have to stand up line by line and just take shots at each other you know we were able to to use i mean i think it was like 1760 when that thing was invented and that was an incredibly accurate rifle for the time so that added the distance so we could outrange our opponents so we could take shots from from cover essentially and so you'd be surprised with how accurate some of those are and, and you know especially modern bullet design now with what you can get i mean you can Sky's the limit, man. You spend whatever you want. You can do whatever you want with black powder. So, um, I can say for hunting, I use a, a 275 grain, 50 caliber Sabot. So, and it's basically it's a giant Hornady XPP bullet coming mm -hmm. out of there. Mm -hmm. It's basically what it is. And you'd be you can hold halfway decent. I mean, three four inch groups at 100 yards isn't really that tough. You know, yeah. shoot, once you get used to shooting it. Yeah, we got to be accurate here. It's not a Kentucky rifle. It's a Pennsylvania rifle. Kucky, yes, sir. Kucky tried stealing it. Oh, I didn't know. I'm just seeing with what's marketed because <laughs> I don't know if I've seen a Pennsylvania rifle, actually. I yeah. said the tradition's Kentucky rifle, so I thought, you know, I didn't. Yeah, yeah they, were, they, they were actually invented in Pennsylvania and somewhere along the line because Daniel Boone or something. It became the Kentucky rifle. Yeah. Well, I mean, wouldn't it be the Chinese rifle because they invented gunpowder anyway? So, you know, I mean. <laughs> well, no, they, didn't the, they didn't invent the Pennsylvania rifle. Though. I mean, if you want to go back to China, they were using matchlock and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah. That's there we, that's a, another discussion for you. <laughs> I had a guy up in Maine. I don't know if he's still alive or not. Many years ago, I used to belong to a club up there. And uh, he would build custom rifles. And one of them that he showed me was a very heavy, bar uh, heavy barreled, forty caliber flintlock. That was, uh, I'm going to guess, probably pretty close to forty eight inches long. This was a thousand yard, forty caliber round ball rifle, and he could shoot it at a thousand yards. The man was extremely good at what he did. But the point that I would like to bring up about the accuracy of the revolvers. A friend of mine had a, a Ruger stainless steel, the uh, Remington model, and uh, I was watching him shoot it one day, and he looked at me and he says, you want to try it? And I said, sure. So I'm standing there on the line. He got it all ready, and he handed it to me, and uh, he says, what are you going to shoot at? We had a target up there that we called the gong. <laughs> this thing was an old disc off a disc harrow oh. hanging from a chain at 186 yards. <laughs> and I watched him as he shot that 44 caliber percussion pistol revolver, I'm sorry. And uh, I brought it up into battery a couple of times. And I put it back down, and I brought it back up a couple more times. And the last time I brought it up, I thumbed the hammer back on the way up. And I let fly with that thing, laid the revolver back down on the table. And it was probably two to three, two to three seconds later. Ping! He says, oh. you son of a gun. Said, <laughs> he should yeah. have told you about that, though. Because <laughs> if you never had an experience with it before, the fact that that's a potential, like if somebody has a light primer strike and they just set the gun down because the hammer's dropped and it hasn't gone off yet. You might want to, that's on him, man. That's totally on oh, him. No, how, no, are you, no. how are you this, supposed this, to know? Cause in the cowboy one, shows, there's never delay shots in the cowboy shows. There's this, never been delay shots. Uh, yet. Oh, no. Yeah. But no, this was not a, this was not a hang fire. I hit the target with the sights on the target. Oh, okay. Okay. At nearly 200 yards with that revolver. <laughs> so they can be accurate. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. You, definitely. I don't doubt that. that. That sounds like about 600 foot per second muzzle blast and stuff. You're rolling. Yeah, and don't, don't apologize for calling a revolver a pistol. Back when those things were brand new, they would have called them a pistol. Yeah. 
Oh, I've been I've been checked by so many times on people because I'll accidentally refer to revolver as a pistol and to do a cleaning video. It's just it's just a habit because you're so used to yeah. you know people are like well, it's just yeah. not a re- it's just a pistol. It's like whatever, man. Yeah. Um. I mean, so all right. So here's the deal, guys. Since revolvers were a thing, I mean, it's just recent where people are like, no, no, a semi-auto is a pistol or a revolver is a revolver. No, they're both <sighs> pistols, idiot. One's a revolving pistol, one's a semi-automatic pistol. They're both. This is a good point. It's a good point. If it throws lead, it's a pistol. Right. Um, when, when you're shopping for these, these, um, cap and ball revolvers. Okay. Uh, you've got traditions, you've got traditions, companies, traditions, firearms.com. You've got uh, Pieta.it. You can switch their website over to English. There's a really bad kind of copy website that's out there. If you look at Pieta's line, somebody like jacked their website and I don't know what they're doing with it, but it's not the actual Pieta website. So if you go to the website that'll let you choose between Italian and English, you're at the actual factory site. And then yeah. there's also Uberti or Uberti, Uberti. <laughs> Just go to you, Birdie. Just go to you, Birdie. So you yeah. recommend Tony? Is that you can't? So let's let's go to you, Birdie, and let's see what they got. Um, so let's go ahead and show off the the Squibby Special, right? I think we've got the uh, the Walker, because a lot of people are saying, "What is this Walker gun?" You guys keep talking about because again, I don't know what people know or what people have seen before. If you so- watch the movie Outlaw Josie Wells, the two big hand cannons that he pulls out of his revolver or out of his uh, holsters on his hips, those are Walkers, and they were issued in pairs to the Texas Rangers when they uh, when they first used them. That, that's who they were meant for. They made, I think, about 1,000 for the Texas Rangers, so they issued them to 500 Rangers, and then they made another 100 that they sold uh, commercially. And the Walker is, is famous from that movie. It's been in a few other movies and whatnot, but it's a big gun. What they wanted was a revolver that you could shoot and kill a horse with that way you could dismount somebody who who's uh, on horseback. And this thing worked that way. But they had problems with them blowing up because of the way they would load the guns. And they had to send a lot of them back to the Colt factory to be repaired. The modern-day reproductions are made out of better steel, so it's going to be really difficult to blow up the gun with black powder. But you can get up to 60 grains of black powder in there, which is like a rifle-type uh, a, you mm-hmm. know, powder load more than a, for some uh, black powder rifles, and it's a big, heavy gun, and it it's not necessarily for everybody because of the weight. The recoil, I don't think, is really that bad. And Black Cat, you've got one. You could you could attest to that. But it's, yeah, it's no, a fun. I'm... It's a fun gun because it's a rare piece of history. Yeah, Even with a max charge in there, they don't kick nearly as bad as you would think they do. I mean, they have some oomph to them, but nothing like nothing like shooting like a 44 mag or something like that. It'd be kind of like shooting like a you know, like a 44 40 out of a single action revolver normally. Well, so, know, the guy who did the gun... You know, it's kind of got that same kind of recoil to it. And up until the advent of the 357, that was the most powerful handgun on, that you could get your hands on if you could find one. I've heard the Walker referred to as the magnum of the black powder revolvers. It essentially was. Yeah. Well, when you look at it, okay, look at an 1860 Army. The normal charge for an 1860 Army is around 30 grains of black powder. So you can get double the amount of powder in the Walker that the Army model revolvers carry. Yeah, but scroll back up. The Dragoon was a little bit shorter than the Walker. Yeah, but the Dragoon would be more common if you were lo- trying to be historically accurate and just say, if I lived in the 1850s or 1860s, what would I be able to purchase? You would be able to purchase a Dragoon. Getting a Walker would be a lot more difficult. Mm, yeah. The Dragoon and, and, would... Uh, the, the Dragoon, the, one of the models of Dragoons, ah, I can't even say it right. They, they, what they did was they, they went through different modifications over the production uh, span. And so you're going to have different models of them, and they're going to re- reflect the changes that they made when they were they were manufacturing these. A dragoon is something I'm I'm interested in getting next, but yeah. it may not be my next purchase. I'm I'm actually more looking towards a star revolver for my next black powder. Yeah, go back nice. to the um, Walker real quick too. There's a there's an interesting fact about the Walker that. Okay, you see how, you, go. you see the um, mode the. Um, yeah, right there. Stay right there. You see how you got the, I guess you call it loading lever, lever for the plunger. Mm-hmm. 
see how they don't got anything holding it in place? Those you would you'll commonly see those where they'll have like wire or leather wrapped around it. That's to hold that in place because when I was talking the when I said black hat the walker wave, those things would uh, work themselves loose, and then you have your uh, ramrod just swinging in the wind from the recoil when it would go off because they didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, things. that's happened yeah, that's... to me a lot. That, and what will yeah, happen that... is, what will happen is, uh, you know, depending on, on on what you've got there, it could actually jam the plunger in the cylinder, mm-hmm. and it won't rotate to the next one. But yeah. it's kind of a pain having to put that lever back up if it falls down while you're shooting. There is a gentleman, uh, I don't have his information uh, on me right now, but who, if you send your walker to him, he can fix that problem, and he'll also uh, check the timing on it and tune it up and, and make it make it a little bit easier to shoot. But there is somebody out there who, who has a service where you can ship your gun, in, and, and I think he does other black powder revolvers as well. And, and, and it's more or less like a tune-up, And but he'll take, I don't know if he changes the spring or what he does to it, but supposedly i haven't actually uh, paid for the service but i've heard about it is that he'll take care of that problem with that lever falling but that is something to consider those people going oh i don't need to fill out a 4473 or any of this other stuff and then they go shoot it after it takes them 15 minutes to load the damn thing they go to shoot it and this thing falls (laughs) and they go this is no fun i want i want something that shoots fast understand this these guns have little quirks they're a pain to clean. They're slow to load. They're slow to shoot. They make a lot of smoke. But if you're if if you're interested in something fun, different, or historically accurate, you'll put up with that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If you load I'll, I'll, sixty I'll, grains in a walker and pull the trigger on it, you're going to be sitting in the middle of a cloud <laughs> of black powder smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the wind is blowing the opposite of you. The prices on these, what I'm seeing, they're not the starting price. I'm seeing stuff that's thirty. I, with the Walker, we're seeing for four hundred four online. So you're not going to pay the starting price. That's just kind of the MSRP. There is some competition out there for prices on these. They have gone up, yeah. but I'm not really seeing much that's selling at the MSRP. Even that Kentucky rifle I was looking at is like there, forty or fifty below MSRP. There's also smaller companies as well, other than a Birdie and Pieta like Navy Arms. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, quick question, guys. Should a beginner maybe look into going 36 caliber instead of 44 just because of just the the ease of use and just the re- – I mean, what if you're going to just get one to get started, what's a good recommendation just that we can make? Just have fun with 36 caliber. Just something you know, like this, 1851 Navy. Was there anything wrong with that? I mean, it's got that plunger no. design. Oh, it does no. have a holder in the front, though, to snap yeah. into place. Yeah, That's right. cool. Those with the yeah, any- start having the spring – any of, the, any of the any of the cap and ball revolvers and thirty six is real good to start out with. I mean, yeah, you're not yeah. going to hunt with it. But if you yeah, no, just as a fun little range toy, just to play one. around with. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't really worry ball. about. I wouldn't worry about a big difference in recoil between forty four and thirty six on a cap and ball. And if, if the recoil is that bad, you can reduce the powder load. You true, don't have to true. max it out. You know, uh, you, you can. It'll still it'll still run a, that ball or conical down the barrel. Uh, you know, if you're not using a max load, if, if you recoil, set, but I mean, it's really, I haven't noticed that big of a difference. I'm not saying there's no recoil at all, but it's just, it's, I don't know. I guess some people are really sensitive to that, but yeah, I wouldn't be going, oh, well, I need to get the smaller one because I'm, 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 you know, I'm worried about this or worried about that. The thing is though, not all of them are completely interchangeable. For example, the, my Lamat shoots a 451, my Walker shoots a 457. So I got to have two different 44 air quote, 44 caliber round balls to shoot those. Oh, okay. Um, so there's so, a difference yeah. then. All right. Yeah. Yep. Something I want to toss out there before I forget it is never, ever try to put modern smokeless in one of these things. Oh, oh yeah. No, we mentioned that with the black powder rifles. We mentioned that because you might think, oh, I'll just use, yeah, you do 40 grains of smokeless back black powder. Uh, you you got a bomb basically. Uh, <laughs> versus the four grains you're supposed to use, you know, or whatever, the five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and just to get back to the Navy versus Army, mm-hmm. James Butler Hickok made very good use of Colt Navy revolvers. I'm just going to throw that out there, too. That was his, that's the one he carried when he was carrying the, the black powder and cap and ball. He was carrying the Colt Navy's. They're just some cool. So Uberti would be, if you go with Uberti, you're going to be making a solid purchase. You really shouldn't have to worry about manufacturing defects and issues and stuff like that, right? 
I I haven't seen any out of the ones I have, and I have like half a dozen new birdies. Okay, yeah. and yeah, you've talked about that before, Tony. I know that's a brand that you really like. I'm just and see the tr- the traditions. A lot of the traditions are are maybe special editions that are made by Uberti or Pieta. So there's, I mean, you're not traditions. Like I said, they 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 might make a few of their own, but we we had mentioned this before that they're more of just of an importer and a re rebadger or a marketer of certain lines. But I mean, some of the and some of these are not listed on the Uberti or Pieta website either. So they're making exclusives for traditions. And some of these are just absolutely beautiful. I mean, the finish on them is just great. I mean, such a such a cool classic design. I mean, it'd just be fun just to have one around. You know, whether you want to just display it or you want to take it to the range and enjoy it. I mean, look at these. These are just awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I might just start off with something simple just to kind of see if I want to spend the money and really get into it. And then after that, upgrade a little bit. But I mean, some of these, like when I went back over to the Uberti website, um, when I was looking at their Navy model, they've got different variants of it that you can buy, too. If you want steel, steel and brass, color case hardened. I mean, you've got like we go to the 1858 New Army Revolver. And you go down here. Oh, it wasn't the new. I think it was the Navy. They had four different versions of the uh, the Navy that you could get. It wasn't the pocket model. Yeah, um, I was just looking at it here a few seconds ago. But you've got a lot of cool different. Uh, here we go. The 1851 yeah, Navy. So you can get it in 36 or 44 caliber. And you've got all these options. You've got the oval trigger trigger guard. You've got the steel 1860, the fluted steel 1860, the steel 1861, the civil brass. What do they mean by that, guys? What's what's civil brass? It's brass like a, frame. Yeah, it's a brass frame. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, what? What? But if you guys were just going to get one, would you just recommend just biting the bullet and just getting a steel frame one? I mean, they're not much more expensive. In fact, they're yeah. usually about the same price as the brass. Yeah, I prefer. Does it really matter? Yeah. Okay. I would go with stainless steel Remington ripoff, man, because it's easier yep. to clean oh, too. Nice. So who? Yeah. Okay, who makes who makes the Remington uh, clones? Who? You they Birdie? all do. You birdie and Pieta. Yeah, Pieta and I, Birdie. I got one of each. So okay, okay, well, let's let's find one because I want to see what now, this looks like. Something yeah, and I, I did a video on this. The cylinders between the Pieta really? new model and the Uberti new model do not interchange. No, they so don't. it make sure if you're buying a spare cylinder, make sure you get it for that manufacturer because if not, yeah, you're SOL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, R- uh, Ruger makes there. a stainless steel Remington. That's the one I fired. Yeah, if um, Taylor's a company, if you go through them to get them whenever they have them in stock right now, they have everything unless there's not being in stock on their website. If you buy the spare cylinders, when you buy the revolver, they'll make sure your spare cylinder is the right one for that revolver. Okay. And make sure that it's timed right with that revolver as well. So here's a 36 caliber 1858 Remington new model Navy. I, this it must have not been on the Uberti website when I was looking. but Or did they just leave the Remington word off the website? Is this uh, like, is this just like what we were looking at on the Uberti website, or is this unique? No, uh, I found that Uberti's website doesn't always have ex- everything that they have available. Like, if you go over to Taylor's and Company's website, and you look at one thing there, and you go over to Uberti's website, you won't find it on Uberti's website, but Taylor's and Company will have it on their website. So. so what's the advantage of going with this versus just that Traditions Army or New Army or New new Navy that I was looking at? What's, what's the advantage of this? Oh, that's a steel frame for one. You guys are talking about clean. You said, you said one, clean. That one might be that one might be a little bit more historically accurate yeah. if you start nitpicking. Yeah, you're not going to have like uh, warning labels if you look at the. I don't know if you can see the other side, but you're not going to have like the warning labels like you would see on the Pieta on the barrel and stuff. You'll have like little thing like oh okay, like that. and you might see on the other side the um, caliber stamped on the barrel, but that'll be about it. Uberti usually will put theirs where it's like underneath, right in front of the trigger guard and stuff like that, so it's not as visible when you're actually holding the pistol. Okay. Uh, Online, it's yeah, under the loading lever. Put them wherever. But, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Let's... On my Uberti, it's under the loading lever. Yeah. Okay. You can see them lawyer yeah. writings for nothing on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they try. Yeah, Uberti tries hiding things as much as possible now travis i can't see the price on that screen share how much are they asking for that revolver uh 399 for a 36 caliber seal frame okay uh i bought that what a year ago i think i paid three 350 and then the pieta the the pieta version i bought this year and it was 315 yeah pietas tend to run uh, than the uberties i bought my stainless steel version uh, for like 380. 
So I typed in Piet at Remington. Here we go. Okay, 344. So I'll out of stock, okay. no back order. But you, you can look around and find one. I mean, it's not. Yeah, so the Pieta is not quite the the grade of quality that you get with Uberti. Is that what you no, guys no, are no, saying in general? The same. Oh, the quality's okay, the okay, same. Okay. It's just on the Pieta. Let's check out all Pieta. of the all of the stenciling for all the the like what Tony's talking about the legal talk is on the barrel. Oh, and if okay, you look okay. at it up close, you can see it from a distance. You can't see it, but if you look at it up close on the Uberti, they hide it underneath the loading lever, so it's there, but it's not in plain sight. That's really the big difference, but. The parts and whatnot are not going to be interchangeable, even though if you put these next to each other, they look the same. I've got that in. I did a comparison between the Uberti and the uh, uh, Pieta on the new model Navy, and it, I, I did a video and I showed the, the differences, and there's, they're very subtle. They really are. So, if, if once again, if you're nitpicking and you're trying to be more historically accurate and you want any modern markings hidden, go with the Uberti. If you don't care, either one is just fine. They're both made in Italy where they've been making guns for hundreds of years. They use good quality metals. They've been making reproductions for decades, what, since the 50s. So, and and some of the other, like we, we were talking before, some of these other companies buy from Uberti or buy from Pieta and put their label on there. If you buy a Colt black powder revolver that was made in the, say, 70s, 80s, or 90s, that's really an Uberti. Okay. They just put the Colt label on there and marked up the price. A lot. There you go, guys. <laughs> uh, pepper box, thirty-six caliber pepper box. Yeah, <laughs> yep. That's what it's called. So that's right. Something, something else. If we're looking at bottom end, you can buy kits, but they're not just your average no, guy you with do a lot sandpaper of can put that thing to mm -hmm. uh, looking like a brand new gun. It is a job. I, I, we, I was looking at some of the Traditions kits. Uh, there's a guy that has a step-by-step -step video on how to do a Traditions Kentucky rifle starting with a kit, and it's above any grade of woodwork I've ever done. And I've got very that's limited fine right there. woodworking skills. That's so That octagonal barrel, man, that's going to add some weight to it, isn't it? Not bad. Not bad. No? I'll tell you what, it makes it accurate. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, dude, the stability on that, plus you get a nice maximum velocity before it leaves the barrel. That's a 12-inch barrel, right? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. It's almost a target grade model, man. I'll tell you what, just go ahead and, and have a cut out in the top so you can put your RMR side up on top of there. <laughs> you are ready to go, man. Get your red dot up on top of there. So, yep, zombify <laughs> that one. Ooh, look at it. They're just yes, pretty, man. They're just so they neat are. to look at. And the fact that this is like a piece of history, man. I mean, I know they're not, like, we're saying maybe they're 80, 90% accurate to what the originals look like. And given the differences in manufacturing, I mean, what else do you expect? You know, short of buying an original. But, hey, what would an original Walker sell for, like a gun auction? What do those things sell for? Oh, in the tens and tens of thousands. If you go to one of the Forgotten Weapons videos and go into the description section, yeah, he'll he'll put the price of what it sold for. Like, he'll, he'll be like, hi, I'm at such and such auction house. Oh, and then man. later he'll put the he'll put what it actually sold for, the, the winning bid. Yeah, and it'd probably be more than your house. <laughs> probably probably i don't have a house anymore tony <laughs> there's i mean yeah you just go check these out they've got some really oh, they got custom guns also Ooh, let's check this out let's and, see what kind of and travis no matter what you end up going with if you just go in for the lowest possible price just to find out whether you like it or yeah. you say i'm, I'm going to get something as historically accurate as i want if you like it you're, you've got a good starting point so really you know if, if you if you um if, if you're a little bit concerned about about the price because you're going, well, you know, I, I think I'm going to get this one that's a little bit more historically accurate. If the bug bites you, you've got a really good starting point there. But I don't know about the resale value on these. I, no, I don't care. would say there's probably isn't, if you had to unload it, the only thing is, you know, you don't need the 4473. So that's a really about the, the only, you know, plus for ease of unloading it. But I'm going to think that you're going to lose value on these if, if you try to sell them or trade them. I, I think I'm going to start buying these, and I'm just going to refer to myself as an art collector, so that way the wife can't argue with me. It's art. I'm collecting art, yeah. you know? Yeah, start hanging least, it up on. If you decide that you don't like shooting them, you do have yourself a nice-looking wall hanger. What I'll say, hey, what right I... now, you know, you guys talk about resale. Right now, anything gun-related is going to sell. I mean, honestly, it's, you know, you have a hot market like right now, and I think you're, you know, you're going to see that you're really not going to have trouble unloading it. You might not get what you paid for, but anything gun related is is selling. I mean, that's just that's, you know. uh, 
that wall hanging thing is why I have the camp ball revolvers that I do. I have yet to shoot them. I've had them for years. I mean, these they're just cool. I mean, it's just it's just neat being able to own a piece of history like this. You can just have it delivered to your door for the most part. Uh, the engraving is just awesome. I love color. I'm I'm a sucker for color case hardened finish. Yeah, I just think it's you like the color so case cool. hardened. Oh, I love it. I love it. Look yeah, at the old school uh, charcoal blue. The coloration they get after they've been fired or as they age. Yeah, they get to be really beautiful too. Yeah, I got now, that. Note, I ordered it. I love the finish on it. Yeah. A note on these is the color case hardening is finish. Hey guys, we got some hey guys, echoing. We got some echoing. Keep it up. Keep it up. What were you saying, Tony? I'm sorry, Tony. I'm sorry. Somebody's that good. 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 That color that case hardening on these on these yet is, is, is finished. finished. It's not, not color case hardening. It's black cat. It's black cat. Black cat. We're gonna black go meet you. Meet you there we go. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's just it's just awesome. So I mean, I, I think part of it when you're shop when I'm shopping for this, it's like okay. Which design appeals to me the most? Or maybe if I'm into firearms history, I want to get something with a certain kind of lineage to it. Um, budget is going to be obviously an issue. How much can I really afford to spend on this? You know, am I, do I want to spend seven, eight hundred dollars on this or am I happy just buying in at three hundred, four hundred dollars? Um, so brands don't really seem to matter, but you guys were saying Uberti's the way to go. Uh, Pieta's got some nice models. Now let's talk look, look up the Lamat. The, uh, no, d don't. It, it'll make me depressed. Don't do it. <laughs> Why? What's up with the who? who which company manufactures the Lamat? Mine's Uberti a Pieta. Both have them. U the Uberti and Pieta have both made them, but they're both ridiculously expensive. Yes. Well, the are. line is under Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Ah, see, right there. Actually, it, actually, it's probably uh, close to Lamo okay. because it's French. But I just call. Well, it we're in America, so we'll call it whatever we want. So yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> it's a America. croissant, which it's a croissant, which not a croissant, which right? Croissant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Sorry about that, Travis. I was oh no, no, dude, don't worry about it. It's fine. fine. Yeah, I'm gonna duck out anyway. Go set up my stream over on my channel. So okay, thanks for well, having me on, man. I just want to, hey, thanks a lot, man. We're just going to talk about cleanup a little bit, and I think we'll probably go ahead and call it. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what you guys, I mean, the supplies are pretty straightforward. When you buy the kit, you get a lot of what you already need. Um, let's talk about cleanup on this thing, guys. What What is the actual cleanup? What's the easiest way to clean these when you're done with it? I hear hot water. Okay, then you got to completely disassemble it and dry everything out, or what's just, just down the barrel? What hot. can we just use? C you, so CLP is not going to do it. You're telling me, right? You don't want to go that well, route. There's, there's chemicals that they sell that are specific for cleaning black powder. If you okay. do, don't want to just use hot soapy water. Dawn. Dawn, yeah. What I you, use. So yes. you're, you soak water. the gun in it or you, you have a mix of Dawn warm soapy water to pour down the barrel? Or so what the, the cylinder yeah. you could wash, like washing dishes by hand. Mm -hmm. Just you know, soapy and and get a get a small brush and run it down the 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 chambers. I yeah. get some pipe cleaners and, and clean the nipple with the pipe cleaner. The the barrel the the outside of the gun you could you could wash it. You don't have to soak it, submerse it, or whatnot. You, you know, if you want to take off the grips to to uh, you know uh, oil the spring or or just to make sure that you've dried it out. You know, if as long as you don't submerse it, you're you're probably not going to get water in there or too much water in there. And then the barrel, yeah, there, there's different uh, black powder friendly solvents to clean the barrel, and you can use a barrel brush, something like that. Uh, but otherwise, though, um, it's it's really just um, I don't. I guess if you dry it off quick, I've heard of people taking these things apart and putting them in their oven to dry them out and stuff like that. Oh, God, if you just no. if you dry them off real quick, if you dry them off real quick, you're you're gonna be fine. If you get a little bit of corrosion, it might look a little bit more historically accurate. If you look at every, the old guns that they've got it on. I was there. gonna say, what did they but use back in the day? They obviously didn't have Don. They use hot soapy water. Hot, hot soapy yep. water. Hot soapy water. Okay. Yeah, but here's the thing. Was if if, if you done. After the powder burns inside the gun, that's when the residue becomes corrosive. The powder itself is not necessarily corrosive, just setting in there. The thing right. is, it's not like your, your smokeless powder where you can go, you know, you get home from the range, you've got stuff to do, and you're like, oh, I'll get back to it this weekend. By the weekend, you've got rust all over it. Okay. So you, you, know, you, you have to make time it. to clean it right away. You, you think about it, you look at Civil War, man, they didn't issue 
cleaning kits and crap like that. These guys did it with a stick and hot water. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. And so when we talk about let people know what is what is the bore butter about? So you load this, you you have your your primer that you put on the back, you've got your measured powder that you put down the cylinder, you've got your ball. Then what else is there? What the, the water, the patch? What else? What keeps the ball in place? Is there something you need to put in front of it? Or? It's wedged in there. Let's go it's, of bore butter. Chris yeah, you're gonna get butter. you're gonna get a lead ring that's gonna come out too if you if it's seated properly, right? Look, a little right. lead ring will pop off the yep. front of the cylinder, mm-hmm. and uh, then you seal. Okay, so why do we seal the front of the cylinder with bore butter or Crisco or to any other touch uh, chain firing all of them? Okay, so you definitely right. need to seal. You you should seal the end of the cylinder with something. Right. Uh, what did they use back in the What did they use back in the day then? Like when they would go into I mean, lard. 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 Okay. Yeah. Lard, yeah, lard you could use Crisco. You could use Crisco if you wanted to. You can actually make your own bore butter. There's uh, there's YouTube videos on it where people make it out of, out of different tallow things. and stuff, or tallow, like cheap, yeah. cheap tallow and something else was like yep. common. Uh, you, are you just safe going with bore butter? Because I see that on the shelves all the time. I, mean, I, is that, uh, I yes. use bore butter. Okay, yep. so you you coat. So if you guys watch video, I would re- definitely recommend you watch like some reviews on how these things are loaded, so you got an idea. I watched probably a dozen videos right. on it. Now I understand the concept of what it takes to actually load it. Um, but so so unloading, you you don't really have a choice. You're better off just shooting it, right? I mean, that's the idea with these things. They're not easy to unload, right? Take caps off. It's unloaded as it's going to get unless you shoot it. True. True, but then you got to worry about the powder going bad. You're better off just shooting it. So you know, take it out with the intention that you're actually going to shoot it. Because I mean, somebody goes and buys one, like, well, I I loaded it, but I didn't get a chance to shoot it. Now what? You know, Um, I see Traditions has an easy clean spray solvent. Would that be fine to spray down the barrel and around the action and inside the the frame? Is that what do you guys think there? Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to use hot soapy water, or you want to use it in conjunction with hot soapy water, either way will work. Yes. Can you use rim oil or CLP on the outsides of these things, or is that a no-no? Should you stay away from that? No, you could, you can, but it just uh, as far as trying to use that to clean up the the residue from no. black powder, it's just not going to be as effective as it is on smokeless powder. Okay. But, but okay. to prevent rust, yeah. Actually, for cleaning these things, if you're going to use some sort of chemical, probably the best would be ballastol. Mix 10 to 1 with water, or 1 to 10. Ten parts water, one part. Now the ballastol, what do you have to buy? I'm Tony. I mean, I've got a couple cans that Squib gave me of the the aerosol. You're talking like a liquid ballastol, oh, like yeah. a drop yeah. of water. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't realize it came any other way because it's ballastol is surprisingly hard for us to find around here, uh, out in this area. We just you just don't see it at Walmart. You hardly ever see it in the the, the shops. So I mean, I know you can order it. So but, yeah. I use the ballastol in the aerosol can and wipe it down after I'm done with it. I wipe it down with the ballastol. If I get a little bit here, a little bit there, not a big deal. I, I don't leave it soaked in the stuff, but I, I wipe it down. At, you know, as much as I'll, as much oil as I'll leave on, on the bolt carrier on my AR-15, I won't. I don't try to leave excess oil on the outside of my black powder revolvers. But uh, the the liquid ballastol, yeah, you can buy it. I think it comes in quarts and gallons. But the air the aerosol would be a good thing to wipe down the when you're done. I mean, here I'm seeing the the Confederate revolver 44 cal 264. I mean, that's you know, and I, this is this says oh, so you can buy these from Traditions directly. I had no idea. Yeah. If you don't mind paying their their asking price, you know, I I didn't realize because most of these other ones are just saying find a dealer. That's what they say when you click on it. So I wow, I really do kind of like this one, this 1851 Navy Black Powder Revolver Ready Pack, just as like a nice introduction to kind of get into. I think it's a neat looking gun. They some, I know they said the capper is not the best, and the, the the flask is tiny compared with what you might want. The powder measure is fine, and this kind of gets all, you into the basics. But yeah, yeah, if you want, they offer that in thirty six. Yeah. See, yeah, I okay. They do offer it as a kit in thirty six. Would you guys rather go thirty six or forty four? I know thirty six uh, is more historically accurate, but I mean, so many of them come in forty four. You know, doesn't matter. The, really. Yeah, yeah, doesn't matter unless you want to be historically accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you're going with a traditions uh, kit, you're not going to have a very accurate pistol anyway. So yeah. I mean, but right. of course, the kits, if you're just wanting, starting out and you don't know if you're going to 
enjoy it if you're going to stick with it. The kits make a good option because they're cheaper and you got pretty much everything you need to get started. Okay. I, I might go that route just to kind of get the basics of it, get a feel for it. Because I can always upgrade and buy the parts later. You say, well, you're wasting your money. Well, if it's just more of a hassle and I didn't enjoy it like I thought it would, I'm also, you know, saving $100 too. I gar- I would definitely buy another one. I mean, it, yeah. I got a feeling once you pick one up, you're going to start looking at others and, you know. Yeah. Then if you like it, you know, get yourself a good uh, steel frame. Uber yeah. Or Fiat, oh, yeah. You'll be good to go. Go get a Lamat. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Lamat's, right. a, the Lamat's an interesting one because it's not just a, a ball firing revolver. It's also a 20 gauge shotgun. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Squib, by the way, how did you come to choose a Lamat in the first? Yeah, that's an interesting journey. point. My first, uh, so I, I, for my first black powder revolver, I said, go big or go home. And, you uh, went big. <laughs> That's what I, I, I did. Well, yeah, no, but see, that's just it. When I bought them, they were $1,000 cheaper. 20 years ago, they weren't as yeah. much as they are today. No, I think no, the I price they're, they're charging today is ridiculous. No, I, I meant you went big because you probably bought the most complicated one that there is. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I mean, I had a few problems with the loading lever popping off, and I, I just crimped the, uh, the little clip on the side there. Uh, I, I, okay, so this is what I did. I went to Dixie Gunworks in Union City, Tennessee. I walked in there and I said, I want a Lamat and I want everything to shoot it. And by the way, how do you shoot it? And the guy at the <laughs> counter sold me everything I needed. He sold me Wonder Watch. He even sold me Watts for the, the shotgun barrel, but he said, we don't have any shot for that. You're going to have to figure that out later. And he showed me how to do it. And he just talked me through it. And I mean, there's nothing to it. How to measure it. How to do it. I went back to the farm. The next day, I shot it. Uh, for the first time, I think I only put like uh, uh, two two cylinders through it, so like 18 rounds, right? No shotgun, obviously. And then I washed it in the sink, and I said, "Okay, I'm gonna need some more. I'm gonna need some spare parts for this, and, and some more more caps and more balls." So I drove back down to Union City, Tennessee, and I bought uh, like one of each part that they had in the store. And I, I picked up uh, some more uh, round balls and, and, and some more uh, um, caps. And I've had all that stuff since. I actually placed an order for more parts at one point and uh, got them in. And then I went looking around for my little parts bin. And I said, all right, I'll just, oh, I've already got one of those. Oh, I've already got two of those. Oh, <laughs> so I've got spare Lamat parts out the wazoo. Uh, because, uh, you know, when you're taking this, these things apart, something can come loose. You can bend something, a little tab that, that holds the loading lever can 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 bend or break. Uh, there's there's a there's a knob that you pull out underneath the barrel that's got a, a pin in it. That pin wore out on the Lamat because of so many times taking the cylinder out, taking the barrel off, stuff like that. And I've got that for my other revolvers too. Sometimes you'll see these things are out of stock. They'll come back into stock. Sometimes you can buy them on a website or at a store that sells black powder stuff. You can also buy them directly from Pieta and Uberti mm-hmm. on their website. And it's not a bad idea to have spare springs or screws or something in case you do lose something because it's not like you're going to go down to the local Bass Pro Shop and pick up a part for this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, now, anybody who might be getting into this, you definitely want to bookmark Dixie Gunworks. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the place uh, to go for parts, yep, accessories. I've, I've been they're, to they're, their they're... store, and I bought from them online, and I've never been disappointed. Now, there is a big YouTuber, uh, you know, for uh, old guns, especially black powder and stuff, who does not like Dixie Gunworks. He's had a bad experience with them, and he, he will never say anything good about them. And I'm not going to debate him because, uh, you know, we all have had, you know, bad experiences with different companies that other people will praise. But I'll tell you that whether in the store or online, I have never had an issue with them. Nor have I. You know, hey, they're, even they're a good company. Palmetto good company. State Armory, it took them six months to give me the parts they forgot to put on my lower when I bought them, the parts that I paid extra for. But they made it right, and they did, and they communicated. I just had to be patient, but I didn't go out on PSA and say, oh, don't buy from PSA. Now, I'm not happy about PSA's pricing increases, but that's a whole different argument. But, yeah. you know, I mean, if but, you've had good luck with something. But they're not the only ones doing it now. Everybody's to, to, to come out, I know, to come out and just rip on one company just for the sake of, you know, probably views, right, just to stir the controversy, of just to stir the pot, or maybe you're just genuinely disappointed. Did you try contact? acting management first did you make some phone calls before you decided to make a video about it on youtube and get upset about it and you know potentially have that company lose business because you had one bad apple you know the the other side of dixie that nobody's mentioned yet is the selection of stuff that they got yep 
Oh yeah. You, I don't think complete I don't think anybody else has the amount of options for weapons that they got. I'm Not looking at that, their percussion the rifles right. They got some great percussion rifle selection. Well, I mean, they they'll help you with clothing for reenactment from from, you know, from the colonial times all the way to the Civil War. They they sell everything. And if you go to their store, they have a a display of old guns there including a real mat underneath the glass and they have a car museum there too. Oh, sweet. Yep. Mm, cool. Yep. Yeah, they've got a nice they got a nice selection. I'm just over there looking right now. So dixiegunworks.com. Yes. Now they're, they, they're, 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 they're my go-to. Two other two other websites I would recommend are Buffalo Arms. Anything 1911 and prior, they're going to have uh, a lot of stuff for and Track of the Wolf. Okay. Devil going to Dixie. They've got You know what's cool about Dixie? I'm just clicking on these randomly. They have guns in stock. There's so many places that are out of stock on all this, all these black powder uh, uh, yeah. revolvers that I'm looking at. Like, no, there's places that just don't have them. I mean, you can, but they actually have, they have six pages of, of um, black powder pistols, revolvers, and they've got a lot of this stuff in stock, which is pretty cool because so many places are actually sold out. I mean, I've, I'm going to bookmark these guys because I've, I don't have this one. I mean, and I don't, it seems to me the problem with me is that I'll find a good website that offers what I want, and then I don't really ever hunt around a whole lot. Like, I'll find the one website that has good gun prices, but I won't see what else is out there. So mm -hmm. to discover something like this is pretty cool. So they've yeah. got a nice – oh, they have a gun. Oh, you can get a catalog for 5 bucks if you want their catalog of everything. Yeah, and it's Sears and Roebuck catalog size. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's interesting? Oh, yeah. In the That's back a good of the bathroom catalog, reading right there, man. Good bathroom reading. Yeah. <laughs> in the back of the paper catalog, there's a recipe for hard tech. That's how authentic these guys are. Dude, that yeah. is so sweet. <laughs> that is awesome. Another, man. another thing about, is okay, you can okay. buy uh, guns, black powder guns at Sportsman's Guide if you're a member and get them on four payments. And the minute you make the first payment, they send you the gun. Yeah. Really? Holy yep. cow. Yeah. Well, I mean, anymore with being able to get people's credit cards and, and checking account numbers for automatic payments. I mean, you kind of lock into a contract. I mean, I'm sure there's people that try to go after them, but they, anybody can pretty much find you anymore if you try to rip somebody off. I mean, really, it's, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. actually uh, bought. Like, you know, out of stock. Uh, Taylor's a company who does, who's a big uh, supplier of uh, Uberti's firearms. They're local to me. And if they had anything in stock, I could go down there and just pick it up and come home the same day with it. They don't have anything in their shop right now. They're wow. That's good that they've got a will call that you can go into. Unlike classic firearms, who still refuses to put a store onto their location. Yeah, they have a storefront, and then behind the storefronts where they do their like modifications to them and stuff. But they don't let anybody go into the back yet. You can only go into the storefront. I asked them if I could go to do a tour and put it on, you know, for YouTube and stuff, and they're like, "No, we don't do that." So. Well, yeah. I guess if they don't want the free advertising, more yeah. power to them, right? Yeah, well, I uh, have their um, uh, pay uh, from. No, I was going to say their shop. Sorry, go ahead. Big. Yeah, their shop isn't real big, so they're, they're worried about uh, something getting screwed up if they have somebody back in there and somebody mm -hmm. bumping into something. And so they, they basically, it's a safe. They don't let anybody in there as a safety issue. I have done that Sportsman's Guide for pay thing numerous times with no trouble whatsoever. I've ordered from Sportsman's Guide before, too. I know a lot of people are complaining because they're taking a lot of orders and then they're canceling a lot of orders yeah. because they'll, you know, they'll put a bunch of – they get so much traffic that they can't – they don't stop it before they oversell. And now there's wait times of like two to three months for ammo. But, I mean, you're going to get that from anybody. I mean, but if you've had good experiences with them before – and it's just something minor that pops up like this. I mean, it happens, you know, there's really not a lot you can do about it. So you just got to be patient. And that's the problem is, you know, we're in this instant gratification society where people get what they want when they want it right now. If something's not right, man, boom, they just, they go full care and, you know, they just, just flip out and just, you know, I want the manager yeah. right now and then go make a video on it, ran about it on Facebook. People just need to chill, man. They seem to take a deep breath Travis, and step back for a moment. Yo. You never go full care. Mm-mm. -mm. Don't just take a deep breath and walk away. Don't be that. Don't be that girl. Don't be that. Don't be that person. So, yeah. all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and call it. It's 930. Uh, wife and I got some stuff we need to work on today. We're going to head out and uh, go hit some yard sales. So we're going to see what's out there. But uh, I think in the meantime, guys, we're going to go ahead and let you go. So panel, we're going to let you put some closing comments out there. Hopefully we kind of 
wet the whistle, so to speak, on getting you interested in cap and ball revolvers just to show you what's out there, give you some ideas about prices, supplies. I mean, obviously, you know, you can go in at any price point you can afford. And so it's not something that's impossible. It's kind of cool. You got this whole this piece of history that you can actually own and you can just go buy it and, and, and just enjoy it. You know, that's that's what the whole thing is about. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and let the panel go ahead and close it out. So Rich White, we'll go ahead and start off with you, man. Any uh, any closing words of wisdom or plug your channel? What do you want to say? Uh, black powder, cap and ball revolvers are fun, but make sure you know what you're getting into before you yes. go and buy your first one. And you don't have to get the biggest and best when you're first starting out. Get yourself one of the tra traditions kits. That's the best way. You're not going to spend a whole lot of money that way that you might not like and find out you don't like something. But even if you do go with one of the big name ones and you decide you don't like it, you still got something that'll look good hanging on your wall. So mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not you can't go wrong with these. I mean, either way, you end up with something that's really cool and historic looking, or you end up something you like shooting. So just keep that in mind and be sure to check out this week unloaded Sunday nights on the Unloaded Media Channel. Right on, man. Make sure you guys get over there and go subscribe. Night Strike, you're on, brother. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, Night Strike One. Uh, Get or miss two nights, nine o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock Central, and figure it out for Pacific because I'm not doing the math. And uh, yeah, go to store.guntube.org. I still got plenty of GunTube Blue CLP for sale. There you go. There you and go. Check out GunTube.org. My local gun store was out of CLP. Both of them were out of CLP that I went to just to kind of look around and see what they had. There was. I was to actually checked to see if they had it. None. None. They had a little bit of rem oil, but that was it. So you don't want to go there. Go get the yeah. good stuff. Go get the GunTube Blue. Oh. That's I'll throw right. the link out there in the chat for everyone. gun tube lube is the best for your tube. So there you go. Are you are you have you ran out yet? No, no, I haven't actually been to the range a lot to require it. I mean, I do have two farms that I currently need to clean, um, so I will be using more. But it, it goes yeah. a long ways. A couple drops on a patch, and you can really, really, and it, it's it's outlasting the cans. I mean, my cans I go through the aerosol cans so quickly because yeah. they're little, you know. So no, I love it. This stuff's great. This stuff's great. But I got plenty of it left, so if anyone cool. wants some... Get yeah. over there, guys. Order some. Pick it up. It's a lot cheaper than ordering directly from CLP. If you can't get CLP locally, if you just don't have it nearby or whatever, just order it online and have it delivered. You're good to go. All right. Uh, single shot. Anything you want to say before we go? Yeah, folks, jump over to um, uh, my channel. Check it out. I'm going to be putting up some new uh, videos here this next time around, I hope. If uh, you get a chance to get them all put up downloaded or uploaded rather oh yeah uh, another <laughs> another uh, channel that you can check into <clears throat> is duelist 1956 i think it is correct me if i'm wrong guys but he does a lot with cap and ball shooting uh preparation cleaning uh all kinds of subjects that he uh, that he covers and he builds uh, these weapons as well. So, Duelist1956, he's a good uh, good guy to watch. I've got him go. on my list. Something to check out, uh, something fun to watch. Other than that, I'm just rolling home. I'm just rolling home. We're headed towards Maine. I'll be up there uh, Monday. I'm going to drop this trailer, and I'm going to take a couple of days off because i got to service the truck. So. There you go. That's about it from here. Well, you try to enjoy some rest yeah, on some Labor Day action there, man. You try to rest up a little bit, dude. <laughs> You're a busy man. Oh, well, I got plenty to keep me busy. <laughs> All right. Cool, I cool. I got plenty to keep me busy. All right. Well, thanks for being here. And shout out to Black Hat Outdoors, who was with us. He's got his stream probably going right now. Um, so make sure you guys get over to Black Hat's channel. You guys go watch that when you get done here. A lot of programs to entertain you for the rest of the day. Uh, Defense Dad, anything you want to say before we go, man? No, just thanks for having me. I learned a lot today. And I'm sorry if it results in a purchase. <laughs> no, not after last night. Hashtag. Well, I'm not even going to say. I'm going to leave it as a surprise. I was going to say what you bought. I'm like, nah, we'll, we'll leave it as a surprise for the audience. So, yep, yep. I'd say you made a pretty good purchase. I think the price was fair given the conditions and stuff. I mean, you, oh, you know, I, I, bought a, I bought a Marlin 336 lever gun. Yeah, I was going to say, if anybody watched Gary's show last night, they already know what he bought. Oh, I had, I didn't know. I was, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I crashed early, so, yeah. yeah well, sort of. I wake up, and then I answer some texts, and then I go back to sleep. But <laughs> Yeah, he sent a picture in last night on uh, for uh, Gary's Gorn segment, and it's a nice-looking wrinkle. Was it the mantle? The mantle photo? Yeah. I'm so jealous. That's awesome. I need to just 
yeah, I want to go hang. I got to get my Henry out. We're going to get the Henry out and do some collab videos here pretty soon because 3030 ammo is plentiful. You can buy it everywhere. <laughs> so if you if you if you're complaining about your no not find not being able to find five five six or nine millimeter, just go buy a lever gun. Go get a thirty thirty. They got ammo at Walmart. Hell, they probably have ammo for your local gas station. Your local yeah. bait shop probably has a couple <laughs> boxes of it sitting behind them, right next yeah, to the little mini bottles of Fireball. There's stacks of thirty thirty. That's how we roll in Nebraska. Well, yeah, I bought out all the thirty thirty they had with that, at that Walmart last night. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I bought, I bought the other half before you, Defense Dad. <laughs> well, last time we had one of these scares, you couldn't find thirty thirty. Now it's everywhere. Well, it was kind of funny. One of the stores I was at said that they they couldn't get any, or they had trouble getting it, and they were sold out. But then I'm like, well, Walmart's got you know nine different varieties from five or six different brands. It's like you know Fusion and Winchester, and uh, I don't think they got the Lever Evolution at, at Walmart, but they have uh, Core Locked. I mean, Federal. I mean, it it's pretty plentiful. So. Yeah, I was, I was shocked in the going. You're talking about Walmart and ammo. Not only did they have the 28 gauge, like I talked about earlier, they had those mm -hmm. little federal shorties there too. Ooh, there you go. Nice, nice. Really? Now we just got to get some yeah, Agula mini slugs, quality. and we got it all covered. So, all right, Tony. Anything you want to say before we go, man? Appreciate your your wisdom and inside knowledge on the whole cap and ball, you know, discussion because I'm I'm a noob to it. So, uh, yeah, a couple of things actually. Mm -hmm. The guy. Duelist 1956, his name is Mike Bellevue, and he does do a lot. Another one is Blackie Thomas, but you have to search to find his stuff because he's got it kind of hidden so he don't get demonetized. Well, you can hide from the YouTube algorithm. I'd love to know a secret on that. <laughs> I, I don't know. He, or if you're a small enough channel, they don't really start to take notice until you start to get lots of subs, and then you start to see your, your videos get critiqued a lot. A lot closer to to you know with YouTube, but it's okay. Then once I get a million subscribers, I can show whatever I want. And I'll get demonetized. I'll be like the big boy, so they don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> I can stop caring. But uh, um, anywho, yeah. As far as anybody thinking about trying to hunt with a cap and ball revolver, you can do it, but you have to think of archery ranges or less for accuracy. I mean, we can peg a gong. You know, you could hit a 12 inch gong out to a certain distance, but if you want an actual kill zone, you know, for a humane kill, you really need yeah. to know that revolver and how it shoots. If it's off a little bit, you know, the iron sights, you might not be able to make any kind of adjustments to. You're going to have to know if it's low into the left or high into the right or if it shoots low or high. So you're going to have to kind of get it. You're going to you're gonna have to definitely take some shots with it. Yeah. Well, if you're not worried about um, accurate, um, historical accuracy, they do have some of these that come with target sights that are adjustable. Oh, okay. Okay. So they've kind of modernized them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And Blackie Thomas, he goes into great detail on how to accurize oh. both of the Colt style and the Remington style both. Cool. Very cool. Very so if you, tell me, if you did a search on how to accurize your cap and ball revolver, there's a chance this channel is going to pop up if you can't find the channel outright. I would think so, yeah. But, okay. Uh, I'll try it. You know yeah. what? After this, after this, I'll go back into my description box and I'll put the links to the websites I went to today, and then we'll we'll find those two channels you guys are talking about, and uh, we'll scroll, pop them down in the description box. You'll have to scroll down around his channel to find one of the percussion revolver series videos. Okay. And once you do that, then you can find the whole damn series. But it's for some reason really difficult. Well, if he just doesn't have a lot of subs and a lot of viewers, it just doesn't pop up as as much on the YouTube algorithm. You know, or if he gets videos that get limited or no ads, they're just less likely to show up in a basic search because it's not making YouTube any money. So why promote you? You know. Well, he evidently took him down himself or hit mm. him himself. Okay. Because he's actually a bushcraft guy and he didn't want to get demonetized. Oh, okay, okay, said. okay. But his cap and ball stuff is really good information. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of great videos out there. Watch a whole before you buy one of these. Watch several reviews on it, and really try to get some smaller channel reviews because those guys aren't influenced by the by the companies that are bankrolling them. A lot of times, they're not being supplied with anything. They're buying these with their hard earned money, and you're going to get a better review, I think, from smaller channels a lot of the time, just because they're not you know they're not getting the guns handed to them. And I say yeah. that as somebody who gets you know I get uppers sent to me from Bear Creek to test, and I show you the good and the bad. So you know. And All right. Thing, you know, they're not just round balls. Yeah. There's a fair amount of different stuff you can run in these things. Uh, oh, yeah. You get like mini ball and stuff like that. And uh, you know, even some modern, more modern style projectiles. 
Yeah, technology has kind of caught up with this stuff and definitely made it a you know much more pleasing shooting experience and you know yeah it's pretty cool what's out there i mean it's yeah it's, it's the, the development you just sit there and think oh it's just all primitive and you look and see what's really available it's like oh my god you know stuff's really taken off especially with the muzzle loaders what blew my mind is what you can get when you go on the high end i mean whew, it's crazy all right uh pat hirsch anything you want to say before we go Uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to say thanks for having me on today. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to get one of those little starter kits. That's how okay. I got started okay. into cap and ball revolver. And okay. Absolutely okay. loved it. And I have three <laughs> now. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll tell you a quick little story. Um, mm -hmm. When I first started getting into it, that starter gun, I actually did a test on that one once I got my second one the 44 it was a 36 caliber i stuffed it full got pretty good with it had the loads and everything right on it put it in my nightstand for a year just to see how stable <laughs> that powder and everything was going to be in the cylinders and everything took it out shot it not a problem everything went off perfect and there was no corrosion inside of the cylinders at all and that was with that powder just sitting in there for a year. That's that because is it isn't corrosive until after it ignites. Right, right. But that's uh, everybody was when I first got started into, oh, you don't want to leave it loaded for more than a couple of days and all this and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, it shouldn't because it's only corrosive after it blows up. So those people all so watch Quigley. Quigley. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> movie magic movie magic yeah so but anyway i just wanted to yeah. say that little stories because you can leave them loaded for a period of time and be just fine so but anyway thanks again for having me on yeah. uh thanks for everybody showing up great conversation today always love the black powder stuff awesome awesome all right man and uh let's see finishing up here squib load anything you want to say before we go any final words of wisdom yeah, I'd like to plug three other channels. Do it. If you want to learn uh, some historical things about black powder firearms or maybe some things that you can do to your firearms to make them work a little bit better or uh, learn about paper, paper cartridges or things like that, check out a channel called Guns of the West. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's That's another channel. One. There's another channel, Duke Frazier with a Z, Duke Frazier Productions. Check those two channels out and you'll learn a lot about your modern reproductions and about how they were used historically in the 19th century. And then uh, I'd also like to plug Budget Guns and Gear Reviews. Right of the People didn't happen last night. It'll be happening on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right, man. So my thank you so much for the panel for being here this morning, guys. I appreciate you getting up early and doing this and everybody make sure you check out their channels. Do like, and subscribe, get over there. And uh, so let's see who's joined us today. We had a pretty, we had a pretty good crowd. We got G23 out there, defense dads over there and over here, night strike over there and over here, William trader in the house, solo yackers out there, get over there, check out solo yackers channel. Good stuff, man. Kingpin running, running the logistics for us today. Gun loving grandpa. Uh, let's see what's other guy that comments is out there. Also DM Foz out there too. DM Foz needs another cup of coffee. Uh, Philo in the house. I did see some grim 90 earlier. Keith Gregory, man, lots of people today joining in. John Z's out there. What's up, John? Uh, grumpy bears out there too. Good, good audience this morning. Grim 90 firefighter. Oh, nine, one, zero, zero. What is up, man? Jason Stewart's in the house. Scott P 79, and I think that covers most everybody. If I miss anybody, I do apologize. Rich White's over there and over here. Nighthawk Medic in the house. We need to get you over here, man. We need to get you on, on the panel. Um, hey, otherwise, I think that's it. Yo, what's up? Travis? Yes, sir. He's also known as Fire Strudel. Yes, that is the Fire Strudel. So yeah. he must be. I think he's just maybe new to watching Caliber Corner, maybe. I can't remember if he, I mean. Well, yeah, it, it, depends, yeah. it depends on what time he gets up. But he had to run off to work earlier, so. Okay, okay. A hardworking man. So, all right, well, guys. You, this know, you been... know Walmart hours. Oh, now come on, no, dude, you can work. Walmart's for twenty four hours, man. I mean, you got you don't know what shift you're gonna get. So, oh, that's crazy true stuff. too. 
All right. So this has been Caliber Corner, episode number 152, where we talked about the basics. We dabbled a bit in the whole idea of the cap and ball black powder revolvers. Maybe put a little bug in your head to check them out, see what you think. Kind of fun to play around with. With fall coming up, you might be thinking about going out to the range. It's a little more comfortable out there for you, especially if you live in a place that's pretty warm. Uh, But otherwise, that's it. We'll be back, I believe, next Saturday. Not sure about the topic. We'll go back and look at the uh, viewer request list and see what's out there and see if there's something we haven't covered yet. You can always make suggestions. Just email me at thecalibercorner at gmail.com. If you got a suggestion for an upcoming episode, something you want to hear us talk about, we can always go back and talk about a topic we've talked about before because, you know, things change, guns change, calibers change, and so on. And uh, I think that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, shout out to SS Pond for sponsoring today's episode. Guys, I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, We will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Have a great uh, Labor Day weekend. Rest up on Monday if you can, all right? Take care, guys. Shut up, be infringed. Never be infringed. Never, never, never. Uh -uh. Never.